So, yes, once again, we have called Street Machine C to the lane. Street Machine C, you should be uh, sitting in the lanes right now. And Street Machine B, you're on standby. We'll be uh, calling you shortly. Here we go. It is 9 o'clock. We are starting on time. The Langley Loafers Old Time Drags. Everybody getting a uh, qualifying time trial hit this morning before we go into eliminations. And we're starting with Street Machine C. Street Machine C divided up into three classes, the body styles, 4C, 65 to, of course, 72, and cars running 11, 50, and slower. And Sylvia Hoogston heading down track, running a 12.49. In the other lane, it was a 13.75. Here comes Eric Hansen and Dan Dancy now. Dancy uh, from North Vancouver. Driving the 68 Plymouth and Dancy over in the other lane. Looks like Dodge Cornet for Quicklam. Bill Hansen leaves. Dancy rolls through the beams and then stops. 13.26, 13.26 is the time for Hanson, and Dancy is just rolling through now. And uh, just for the record, 22.52, 82 miles an hour. So Colleen Davis rolling forward here on the tower side attention in the pits street machine B we need you to lanes three and four please street machine B bring them up lanes three and four Two more cars heading down for uh, just a uh, time trial run here this morning. Get the car, give the car and the driver one more opportunity to sort out the performance. 13 flat on the Lord Coast side. As rolling forward is Brady Peterson and Graydon Foxcroft. Foxcroft driving that. Uh, very nice looking 66 El Camino. Over here on this side, well, that Fairlane's looking pretty sweet as well. Brady Peterson, an auto painter from Souk, runs 1173, 116 miles an hour, 1294, 109 miles an hour for Graydon. Once again, we have called Street Machine B to lanes three and four, please. Street Machine B, bring them up to lanes three and four. Lucas Stone and Neil Smith heading down track. Stone runs 11.99, 114 miles an hour. The pickup, 12.81. 96 miles an hour. And that brings up our next two runners. 
John Sayer and Mark Muscant. Mark's from Vernon. Old family racing behind that 66 Studebaker. Car that uh, I have to say I have not seen more than one of in my lifetime, especially at the racetrack. John Sayer, though, 68 Dart, seen lots of those. His runs 1171, 113 miles an hour, and well, the Studebaker goes 1653, 82 miles an hour. Not exactly the quickest car on the property, but hey, it's all about consistency, right? Are you going to leave the start line? with a, a great reaction time? Are you gonna run your dial in as close as possible? That's what it is all about. It's not the quickest. It's sort of like the tortoise and the hare. Just because you're fast doesn't necessarily mean that you're gonna win every race. You have to be consistent, deliberate. Staged up right now, Jack Hodgson in that fair lane. El Camino in the other lane. That's Gord Matajewski. Hodgson will stop the clocks at 13.56, 101 miles an hour. 14.58 for Gord at 93 miles an hour. And that brings up Veronica Hodgson in her 69 dart. And Yvette Kusachi in the 69 Mustang. So Veronica and Yvette off and running. Veronica goes 1251, 108 miles an hour, and Yvette goes 1401. From North Delta, that's home base for this 66 Malibu. Running a 406 cubic inch small block Chevy. And in the other lane, that's the 66 Bel Air wagon of Dennis Winton. So Francine turning on the red bulb, leaving too quickly on the start line, but uh, she'll still get a time of 14.04, 104 miles an hour. Winton goes 11.91, 110 miles an hour. As Tony Reed and Rick Thiessen roll forward in Street Machine C. Reed's driving that 67 Mustang here tower side. Out of mission. Out of Coquitlam is the Cougar. 69 Cougar of Rick Thiessen. Mustang to a 12.57, and Rick runs the Cougar to a 12.83. Here's another one of those uh, great looking 67 fair lanes. 460 cubic inch Ford from Salmon Arm, tower side, and Attention in the pits, attention in the pits. We need Street Machine A. To the lanes, please. Street Machine A. To the lanes and stand by Street Classic.
So Street Machine A, we're going to put you in lanes 5 and 6. Bring them up to the staging lanes 5 and 6. And stand by Street Classic. Great looking charger heading down track now. Sixty nine charger, no information on file at this point, but it'll get there. Thirteen eight zero ninety nine miles an hour, and here comes another fair lane with a rather unique hood scoop. So Bill Halicki in the other lane in his little ranchero, Grant Clone from Victoria. In the uh, fair lane with that pretty big uh, hood scoop that is uh, custom made. Grant always has a car that lifts the front wheels and he uh, certainly does that on this run. Gets there with a 998. And Bill Halicki in that Ranchero goes 1095, 122 miles an hour. As George Hill and Susan Fougere roll forward. Susan driving the 68 Firebird out of Edmonton, Alberta. Prince George is home for the 67 Mustang. So in the uh, Firebird, 505 cubic inches of Pontiac power. 441 cubic inch small block Ford in the Mustang. And so they'll roll forward as we uh, are now in Street Machine B. We've called Street Machine A to lanes five and six. Street Machine A, five and six, please. Mustang launches hard, spins the tires a little bit. Runs 968, 138 miles an hour, and Susan goes 10, 11, 133. Attention in the pits, attention in the pits. Street Classic, we need you to the lanes, one and two. Street Classic, bring them up to the lanes, one and two. Stand by, Street Rod, you're next. Street Classic, though. Bring them up to the lanes one and two. So Stu Funk yesterday, perfect reaction time on the Christmas tree. Pushed it a little bit today as Mal Patterson lifts the front end and heads down track. Maple Ridge runner drives that 68 Acadian that he calls malfunction. And it runs a 10 27, 131 miles an hour, 1130 for Stu Funk in the 1970 Chevy Chevelle. Here's Bob Ricky now and John Vandevan. Ricky all the way in from Victoria. 68 Valiant. And John Vandevan, well, he's not very far from home. Abbotsford is home here where he is a mechanic. Driving that orange Firebird. Once again, we have called Street Classic to lanes one and two. Street Classic, lanes one and two. And Street Rod, you are still on standby. The ever vigilant start line crew noticing uh, something maybe uh, leaking underneath Bob Ricky's Valiant.
Ross Walker, Eric Stone heading down track now. Walker stops the clocks at 10 11, 131 miles an hour, and 10 38 is the time for Eric Stone at 130 miles per hour. And here comes Walter Johnson in the 72 Red Chevelle and James Dobson in the 1970 Camaro sponsored by Ron's Engine Machine out of Abbotsford. Which is where Walter Johnson is from as well. Dobson runs a 1059, 127 miles an hour. It's 1131 with a nine for Walter Johnson. David Cohen and Rob Hodgson. So Cohen from White Rock in Flashback Plymouth and Hodgson in the 67 Plymouth on the other side of lane. So 66 and 67 Plymouths. Hodgson, of course, our hot rod champion from 2021 in that car. Those 1085, 1085 at 123 miles an hour. 10.07, 129 miles an hour. As Kevin Clark now and Jordan Almas come to the line. Kevin from Rosedale. Adventure RV sponsorship on the 68 Nova here at Tower Side. And the 69 Dark. Well, they're from Enderby, BC. The Dark is going to get there with an 1136, 116 miles an hour, 1082 at 123 miles an hour. Dale Posnick and Sean Cassidy. And I know what you're thinking. Sean Cassidy now races drag cars. It's a different Sean Cassidy. Not, not any relation to the Partridge family. Wheels up way high for Dale Posnick, and he sets it down and is going to be motoring on through and get there first with a 10.26, 132 miles an hour, 10.68 for Casper, the 65 GTO, 126 miles an hour. As John Nielsen and Kevin Garlock are uh, rolling up to the stage beams as we are in Street Machine B. John Nielsen from Tawasson in that Pontiac. In the other lane, the 71 Camaro with the Merlin engine, Kevin Garlock from Victoria. 915, fast running Camaro, 915, 143 miles an hour, 1201 here on the tower side. Kerry Reedlinger and Glenn Fillingham. Glenn in the 1970 Hornet, American Motors product, and Reed Linger from Surrey in the GTO. Pontiac GTO, 1965 vintage. All cars in the category have to be uh, 1972 or older. And in Street Machine B, you're running 1149 or quicker. Billingham runs a 10.25, 128 miles an hour, 11.49 for Glenn Filling, or for uh, Kerry Reedlinger, rather. Russell Jeffrey and Don Almos. Don's in the dark. And Russell is in the Nova. Nine seventeen, 148 miles an hour, 988 and 134 for the darts. We're just 
just motoring through the category. Brett Halicki and Mike Probin. Brett Halicki from Chilliwack and Mike Probin from Vernon. So Halicki in the 71 Ford Pinto. Probin in the 66 Nova. Nova. Over on the spectator side. So 11.01, 11.01 at 121 miles an hour, 11.73 at 105 miles an hour for the Pinto. As Chris Stone and Jim Benke roll forward. Both running in Street Machine B. Chris Stone sponsored by Willowbrook Motors, Winter Harbor Marina, Titanium Auto Parts, and BG Fuel Products. Jim Benke. Rad Torque sponsored 67 Plymouth Barracuda. It's always close with those guys. 10.07 for Chris Stone and 10.10 for Banky. John McCartney and Blake Miller. Blake from Victoria in the 67 Camaro sponsored by Searles Auto Repair. And John McCartney, a machinist from Abbotsford, comes out, well, pretty much only for the Langley Loafers so that I can recall. He doesn't show up at too many other races in that Falcon. So Blake Miller goes 868. John McCartney lost it on my screen. Brian Heffel. Abbotsford based 71 Vega. Not a very loud car, but it is certainly a fast car. Goes 995. 995 with a Ford, 135 miles an hour. And that is going to do it for Street Machine B. So Street Machine A then will roll into the quickest of the three. There are electronics accepted in the Street Machine A category, as you will see. It's Ted Buss and Brendan Rouse head down track. Brendan Rouse goes 10.38, 10.38 and Ted Buss, 9.04. So Rouse in the Camaro ran 128 miles an hour and bus in the 34 Ford went 144 miles an hour, which brings up Warren Jacobson. Jacobson from Mission rolls his uh, 67 Chevy 2 into the stage beams and there you can see the electronics in, at work. So 
So he will run it through with a 1093, 136 miles an hour. Out of the water box, Charles Sidden and Jerry Epp. Epp from Abbotsford in the Mustang, 66 Mustang, fastback. And Charles Sidden from Lake Country, BC, where he is a shop owner, Tops Auto Repair. It's the blue 67 Dart. So Charles turning on the red light, but will get timed information. Goes 979, 136 miles an hour. Jerry Epp, 1085. 152 miles an hour. And here comes Dan Parsons, Quality Racing 1970 Duster. So Parsons runs a 1086, 129 miles an hour, 1086. And that is going to do it for Street Machine A, I believe. Well, I could be wrong. The Rosebud Acadian. Barnett Rose from Alberta calls his Acadian Rosebud. Nine eighty seven, one hundred thirty three miles an hour, nine eighty seven. So Barnett Rose. And that is going to do it for Street Machine A. We do have a couple of uh, cars that are licensing, and that is one of them rolling into the water box right now. Classic guys, I know that you're all looking for your Quick 8 list. There is a Quick 8 list that is posted down at the base of the tower on the whiteboard. Uh, obviously, with one more session this morning here that we're about to get into, that is going to change. Attention to the pits. We want uh, Street Rod, lanes three and four, please. Street Rod, bring them up to lanes three and four and stand by Nostalgia Gas. So the Chilliwack runner in the 67 Camaro making a licensing pass goes 1104. 1104 at 92 miles an hour. All right, so now we're going to roll into Street Classic. So the Quick 8 in the Street Classic category will run Street Classic A. All remaining cars are gonna run in Street Classic B, so posted list of who's currently qualified in Street Classic A in the top eight. Well, that is probably going to change. Got to run quicker than 1042. So, problem set in for Ralph and not able to complete the run as Andy Fisher goes 997. 
997, 112 miles per hour. So while we're uh, just looking at uh, the racing surface, I know that all of the Street Classic A people are in their cars. Here's the uh, quick eight as of yesterday. And we'll start with number eight. That is Vic Senra. And then we go Tim Cordner, Bob Baxter, Terry Charles, Cal Barnes, Mark Brenzinger, Scott Winterbottom, and Ryan Johnston. So that is your quick eight as of yesterday. And this list may change. The time to beat is 10.42.3. Just under that is Daryl Stoby with a 10.51. Jerry Brabander, Ray Bollinger. So we've got a lot of cars in the 10s uh, that uh, will be uh, looking to squeeze into the top eight. We'll have the revised list posted after we are finished this qualifying run. So Cal Barnes and Colin Moore. Cal Barnes currently in the top eight, in the number four position. Prince George car, he calls it that car. 61 Bel Air, Chevy Power under the hood. In the other lane, the 63 fair lane is from Chilliwack. That is Colin Moore. So Kel Barnes heading down track goes 994, 994. So quicker than his uh, run of yesterday which was Chan 03. So makes an improvement. Sits up in the number four position still with that 994. As Pete Leg and Doug Yazidvasky from Surrey roll forward. Doug in the 64 Mercury. And Pete driving the 56 wagon. is home for Pete Leg and he legs it through with a 13-11. 13-11 at 96 miles an hour. Doug goes 13-11 as well. 13-11-8 to a 13-11-3. Wendy Flanor from Savona. 56 delivery Chevy. Ryan Johnston in the uh, 63 Nasty Fish Corvette. Eight thirty one. Eight thirty one is the time for Ryan, and that improves on his time of yesterday. Eight ninety five. He ran yesterday, so eight thirty one. Goes uh, to ensuring that he's in the top eight and currently in the number one position. John Anir now and Vic Senra. Senra holding down the number eight position so far with that 1042. He's in the pickup over on the spectator side. The Ford F100 from 1956. It's also uh, Pick up in this lane. John's running a 1953 GMC. So Senra will get there with a 1064. Not an improvement, actually, two tenths slower than his time of yesterday. So he remains in the eighth position. Brings up one of the uh, Henry J's, Earl James. We had three or four Henry J's here on the property yesterday. This is a great story because he, Earl, bought this vehicle 
when he was in grade 10 in 1967 and he paid 45 bucks for that Henry J and it is still running down the racetrack. So Bob Baxter from Powell River 1019 1019 Bob Baxter was in the number six position with a 1020 goes 1019 133 miles an hour at the Henry J goes 1377. The Warbird he calls that Thunderbird the Warbird. Will Friesen from Chilliwack. 57 T-Bird up against John Kunawalchuk from Delta. Bionic Pierogi Racing, 62-4. Not exactly sure what a Bionic Pierogi would be, but uh, sure sounds good. Rolls off the tongue quite nicely. Will Friesen goes 1076, 104 miles an hour. 1076 and a 1220, 110 miles an hour. And Mark Brenzinger now brings the out of time Nova to the start line alongside Greg Wessling from Calgary. Wesley currently in the number 23 position out of uh, 33 cars in the street classic category. Brenzinger launching hard, wheels high up in the air, and he is uh, halfway down track. Will finish the quarter with a 961, 137 miles an hour, so he improves by about three one hundredths of a second over his 964, so staying in third position in the quick eight in street classic here comes paul carr then and terry charles terry charles driving the 56 chevy number six position from yesterday with a 10 20 and a four and paul carr driving the uh, very sweet looking 63 common 10.08. Wow. Big improvement from yesterday. Almost two tenths. 10.08 for Terry Charles. Goes up to the number five spot right now. Doing a little bit of shuffling within the uh, quick eight. Paul Carr runs a 11.10. Uh, Here comes Steve Wilson now and Stephen Brown. Uh, not too smooth. So uh, Steve Wilson goes 11.57, 116 miles an hour. 15.29 for Stephen Brown. 95 miles an hour. Rolling forward now, Al Learmoth and Rob Dollywall. Rob sponsored by Cruise Customs out of Kamloops in that 55 Chevy. And Al is driving that uh, little Nova wagon. Hey, tension in the pits. Attention in the pits, Nostalgia Gas. We need you to lanes one and two. Nostalgia Gas, bring them up to lanes one and two and Outlaw N, you are on standby, but Nostalgia Gas, bring them up, lanes one and two. Roland Lowen and Tim Cordner now. The Freak Child, he calls that 55 Studebaker, 468 cubic inch big block Chevy in the, under the hood of that Studebaker. He charges off the line, rolling, blowing in a uh, very rare Meteor, 55 Meteor. The pickup goes 1030, 128 miles an hour, 1334 at 103 miles an hour. So Daryl Stovey now and Alex Stovey. 
Alex is in the 64 Chevelle on the spectator side and Daryl he's over here tower side Daryl is in the number nine spot hoping to crash into the quick eight with a run here he ran 1051 yesterday needs to run quicker than at least 1040 get into the quick eight It's going to be a 1045. I don't think he did it. 123 miles an hour. 1378 for Alex in 97 miles an hour for that Chevelle. So Daryl looking to stay on the outside, looking in. Number nine spot for him as Vic Senra still holds down the number eight spot. Ray Bollinger now. Testintune.com Pontiac. Maple Ridge alongside Jerry Brabander, multi-time hot rod champion here at Mission Raceway. Jerry goes 1060, 124 miles an hour, 1057 for Ray Bollinger though. So both those runners outside the quick eight. And Scott Winterbottom, who's currently in the number two spot with a 939. And Terry Hoogston. Terry Hoogston in the 57 BW wheels up launch for both cars as they uh, charge down track. It is a sticky and it's hot. It is uh, a good course to run on. 937, 140 miles an hour. 1071 for the VW. So we continue on now with the uh, next category, Street Rod. So Martin Dykstra and Kelly Robinson. Burnout's complete. Dykstra over here, tower side. Why be normal racing, he calls it. 27 4T Roadster. Small block Chevy power under the hood. Sponsored by Valley Traffic Systems, Iron Mountain Equipment, Southridge Building, Al Alquip Diesel, Vanport Enterprises, Emco, Ipex. Man, oh man, long list. Evelyn Kelly Robinson out of Stony Plain, Alberta, bringing his 34 Ford to the Langley Loafers, old time drags. And they stop the clocks at the top end at 9.51 for Martin and 9.58 for Kelly. 137, 138 miles an hour. 13 cars in the street rod category ran yesterday. Rob Monroe and Ken Wright will be our next pair. Right completing the burnout out of the water box from Torrington, Alberta, 1928 Model A. General Motors power under the, uh, well, I was going to say under the hood, but he has no hood. Sitting out in the open air. 355 cubic inches sitting there. Rob Monroe got 414. And so Rob Monroe from Langley, white knuckle racing. Currently in the uh, is the second qualifier, position number two in the category of street rod. So Rob Monroe and Ken Wright just uh, taking their time, both stage now. Monroe halfway down the track, well ahead of Ken Wright. Gets there with a 9.05, 147 miles an hour, 12.49, 109 miles an hour. Keep in mind that all of these racers will be running against a dial-in handicap start come eliminations. So uh, some of these races, if they were heads up, would look kind of lopsided, but there will be the handicap Christmas tree in effect for eliminations. Jerry Brarin and... Sylvia Goslin. So, 
Attention in the pits. Attention in the pits. Outlaw N. We need you to lanes three and four, please. Outlaw N. Bring him up to lanes three and four. This is your call. Outlaw N. So rolling into the uh, start line, infrared beams, James Winter and S. Reeves. So attention in the pits, attention in the pits. Canada West door slammers, we're putting you on a uh, standby call. We're going to be running you at 10 o'clock for your hit down the track, 10 o'clock. And so this is a uh, standby uh, call. So James Winter and S. Reitz heading down track. 1283 for the Reitz Custom Fabrication car. On the spectator side, 108 miles an hour. James Winter goes 1388, 93 miles an hour. And Zach Joyce backs up his 48 Austin. Dodge power under the hood. Big wing has been known to run in the door slammer category. Zach Joyce currently is the number one qualifier for Street Rod A. Frank Egley in the other lane, 36 Chevy. Small walk forward power. Adjustments, making sure the oil pressure is up for Zach Joyce. And everybody gets the go-ahead. Stage him up. Stage him up, folks. Frank's in. And so is Zach. So they are pre-staged. And here goes Frank in. And Zach is in. And the tree comes down. And away we go. So I saw a little bit of hesitation on the part of Zach. He uh, just did not seem to feel comfortable getting that car to the line, even though he's the number one qualifier. Problems for that run, and he's just coasting down. Frank Egley goes 1280, 101 miles an hour. But, uh, yeah, problems for Zach Joyce. He's not uh, – he wasn't feeling it. So he'll go and – might be able to get off the track on his own power. We've shut off those in the water box right now. Hey, good morning, George. I don't think George can hear me. So it looks at uh Paul Papperscar and, and Robin Redding. So Paul from Vernon, Homestead Custom Engines here, Tower Side. Listed as a uh, 32 Plymouth. I'm not sure that uh, Plymouth was around, but I know I wasn't around in 1932, so that's entirely possible. 
Robin Redding from Merritt, 27 Model T. Remember, this is the street rod category. And in the street rod category, what we're looking for is body styles up to 1948. So, 1948 and older is good. Getting there first with a 10.28 is Paul. In his 32, 129 miles an hour, Redding goes 12.33. 105 miles an hour. So Paul slots into the number five position and Robin in the number six. 13 cars in the street rod category. And next up will be Nostalgia Gas. Looks like there will be a few licensing passes before we roll on over into Nostalgia Gas. And, of course, these runs will still be all the way out to the quarter mile. Ten twenty six with a one at 117 miles an hour for that driver TCS I no information on file for the car but it was a solid hit some work to be done a starting tree almost four and a half tenths but a solid uh, overall package for the top end it was already hundred and seven miles an hour at just the eighth so there is definitely a lot of speed underneath that car and who knows maybe we'll be seeing them actually racing on the track here before long. And with the second uh, license pass appearing to be backed out of the uh, staging lanes, we're going to roll on over into Nostalgic Gas for their one qualifying hit on this beautiful, beautiful Sunday morning. The gas category.
So tension in the pits once again. Tension in the pits. I think my batteries went dead. So Canada West door slammers, you should be uh, rolling into lanes five and six. Five and six Canada West door slammers. And also we were waiting for a couple of Outlaw N racers who have not yet made it to the staging lane. So Outlaw N, if you uh, are driving in that category, we have called you to the lanes. As we continue with Nostalgia Gas, Jody Wilson and Wade Lahassie. Wade taking that 59 Chevy to a 1002 at 130 miles an hour. Jody, 1064 at 124 miles an hour for Steve Chase. So Outlaw and again, you should be in the staging lanes and we have called Canada West door slammers. Hey, nice 1933 Willys rolling into the uh, pit area there. Beautiful looking car. Almost looks like a replica of the, uh, the classic 33s from the early 60s. So Steve Chase. 1122, 1122 at 108 miles an hour. So I think that is going to do it for Nostalgia Gas. Outlaw N is going to be our next category. So we're just taking a uh, quick break to assemble cars in the staging lanes. We've got Outlaw N that will be coming up to the start line here pretty quick. And then we'll have uh, a tiny bit of track preparation before Canada West door slammers make their uh, one hit this morning. We were missing a couple of uh, Outlaw N cars in the pits, so hopefully they made their way into the lanes. And here we go. Outlaw, no electronics. That's what the N stands for. Outlaw N, no electronics. Burt Worrell and Keith Winterbottom. So Burt Worrell, 915, 148 miles an hour, 846 for Keith Winterbottom from Maple Ridge, 158 miles an hour. Burt from Langley. Andy Antle, 
Black Lahash in the F100. Tom Stockhausen in the other lane. 947 for the Acadian, 139 miles an hour. Antle goes 892, 147 miles an hour. So once again, we have called Canada West Door Slammers to five and six, please. Canada West Door Slammers, five and six. So Blair Criddle, 903, 145 miles an hour. North Delta Mechanic. Takes the 27 Ford T down the quarter mile, 145 miles an hour. Hey, you're, uh, you picked a great race to join us, race fans. The Langley Loafers, BC Old Time Drags, featuring the West Coast Gasser Get Down. All cars here today, 1972 or older. That's the plan. It's old time drags, right? Here's a little bit of history on the Langley Loafers. They are a club that uh, was founded in 1957. And of course, Langley. And they've been active in motorsports since that time. The club's membership is comprised of some 30 active and enthusiastic street rod and race car hobbyists. And Members come from a diverse business and career backgrounds. It was back in about 1988 that they ran their, well, after doing so many successful car shows and everything else, they decided to get into the drag racing game. And that's when they presented the inaugural BC Old Time Drags back in 1988. And as an annual event, at Mission Raceway here, it's become sort of a, a major motorsport gathering of the area. And you can tell that by looking at some of the great looking cars, the street rods and classic cars all along the fence on the pit side area. So not only is there a lot of racing action on the drag strip, but there's also a lots of things to see and do in the pit area. The financial success of these events along with the uh, contribution of the many sponsors and race supporters, have enabled the club to undertake a scholarship program in Langley High Schools. Attention in the pits. Attention in the pits. Street Machine C. We need you in the staging lanes. One, two, three, and four for first round of eliminations street machine c bring them up as i see canada west door slammers are rolling into the lanes right now in lanes five and six so as i was saying and far as far as the uh, scholarship programs from the langley loafers over the years they have presented cash scholarships to uh, automotive shop career program students uh, it's actually one of the first such awards in BC. The schools that have benefited are DW Poppy, Walnut Grove Secondary, Alder Grove Secondary, Brookswood Secondary, and Langley Senior Secondary. So uh, Langley Loafers not only active racing on uh, the drag strip and racing across BC, but also active in the community especially with the high school. So great to see. That is why the Langley Loafers BC Old Time Drags is one of the uh, most popular events on the Mission Raceway race schedule. So attention in the pits once again. We have called Street Machine C back to the lanes for your first round of eliminations. Street Machine C to the lanes. Lanes one, two, three, and four. Doing a little bit of track maintenance here, a little bit of track preparation. It's not a question of, you know, it's funny how on, if this were April, we'd be running the tractors up and down the track to uh, build some heat into the surface. Uh, that is the last thing we need today. The 
track was at 138 degrees towards the end of the day yesterday. On Friday, I had the opportunity to be down in Seattle and watch qualifying at the Flavor Pack Nationals at Pacific Raceways. And uh, boy, it was a scorcher there as well. Antron Brown said that the racetrack was 140 degrees, and I really wondered whether, uh, well, how many cars were going to make it down the track. But as it turned out, as it turned out, those tuners are uh, paid the big bucks for uh, a reason. Uh, they were able to get every nitro-burning funny car and top-fuel dragster down that quarter mile uh, without any problems. They weren't setting world record times or miles per hour, but uh, there was only one dragster, I think, that actually smoked the tires, basically the wrong setup, smoked the tires, and in the uh, same lane, the follow-up car, Steve Torrance, ran a 381. So uh, it was all about the setup. If you uh, had your car set up well, the hot track was not uh, necessarily a detriment to getting down the track. But uh, similar situation here yesterday, 138-degree track. It uh, uh, does pose some problems for the faster 200-mile-per-hour cars. And um, you just need to be able to tune the car and set it up so that uh, it is uh, going to navigate its way down. Well, I don't know how many of you were here yesterday. We did have to uh, uh, close the day on a rather unfortunate note. We had a uh, significant uh, incident at the top end. Both the drivers were A-OK, -okay, so that is the good news. We, uh, we always like that news. Uh, the cars were a little less uh, better for uh, wear. Uh, it looks like Steve Horn's got uh, many thousands of dollars of uh, repair on his 41 Willys, but uh, cars we can repair, people can't. So good to see that uh, the drivers were uh, walking away from that incident. But at the end of the day, it was one of those events that it was going to just take so long to clean up the track and uh, uh, prepare it. So uh, we decided to call it. There were, I think, about six cars that uh, were not able to make the run. And I'm thinking that uh, I see some door prize uh, names here. Uh, the uh, I Langley Loafers, if you're wandering in the pits, are... Always looking for people to sign up uh, for a door prize. And if you haven't yet wandered by the Langley Loafers pit area, they're right uh, behind the grandstands. So check them out. They've got some souvenirs that you can purchase. And here are the first two names drawn for door prizes. Are you listening out there? James Dobson and Susan Fougere. James Dobson and Susan Fougere. Make sure that you head over to the Langley Loafers Old Time Drags tra tent, their, their trailer area. They have got some door prizes for you there. James Dobson and Susan Fougere. And uh, throughout the day, they'll be drawing some more names. So make sure that you uh, are paying attention and uh, we'll get you to wander over back to the Langley Loafers tent and grab the door prize so so we've got um, something up here in the tower that was turned in and it is a garage door opener and it was found by the concession stand so if you've lost your garage door opener it's on a on a clip so it looks like it probably just unclipped from you and uh, fell on the ground the garage door opener is up here in the tower. So um, take a look. If you don't have your garage door opener, we do. Hey, once again, I see Ken down there getting cars in the staging lanes. Ken has called for Street Machine C. All you Street Machine C runners, you should be coming up to lanes 1, 2, 3, and 4 for your First round of eliminations. Just doing a last bit of spray now. We do have our Street Classic A lineup. Let me run through that. These are the quick eight. 
in Street Classic. Everyone else is running in Street Classic B, all right? If you're not in this list, you're in Street Classic B. So here is Street Classic A. We're starting at the bottom, it will be Scott Winterbottom, Vic Senra, Tim Cordner, Mark Brenzinger, Terry Charles, Bob Baxter, Cal Barnes, and Ryan Johnson. So those are the quick eight in Street Classic after this morning's run. And so we uh, congratulate the quick runners in the uh, category, everyone else running in the B category. And so uh, we'll be calling those runners just a little bit later on. So the Line of the Loafers old-time drags couldn't work without the sponsors' support, and we want to thank the sponsors for this weekend's event. Friby Gourmet Foods and Dudney Pub Church of the Blues. Those are the primary sponsors, but then there's a host of others who have supported this event, and they include the Torchman Rod and Custom Club, BC Scale, Alder Auto Parts, Badass Garage, Lee's Market in Fort Langley, Nitro Lube, Richard Persall, SoCal Speed Shop, and TCS Products. All of those good folks have got displays in the pit area, and I would certainly encourage you to wander through the pits at some point in the day, visit those sponsors. Uh, some of them have merch for sale, and they would uh, certainly welcome your business. And as always, we encourage you to support them as they support racing here at Mission Raceway. So we're just, uh, just a few minutes away from Canada West Door Slammers. This will be their last opportunity to qualify. And then we've got Alrighty, this weekend sponsor for Canada West Door Slammers, TCS Transmissions, first two in the water box. Greg Feel in his 69 Opal GT. And Brody Shirk in the 67 Chevy. So Greg Feel talked about that car, his, uh, his Quickest time before yesterday, or is, uh, yeah, quickest time, 6.48. Fastest mile per hour in that Opal was 219. Yesterday, he ran 221. So 221, it's a 120-inch wheelbase. It looks shorter than it actually is. It's a home-built car, twin turbo, quite an amazing vehicle if it hooks up on the start line, and he's going to do everything in his power to do that this morning. So. Greg Field currently in the number one spot with that 641.9 at 221.51 miles an hour. Rod LeClaire right behind, 682 and 693 for John DeYoung. So uh, a record mile per hour on Greg's field, Greg Field's car as he rolls forward, gets in, getting the assistance of crew member and Brody Shirk. 
doing the same here on the tower side rolling forward. So Greg Field sponsored by Jubilee RV Acumen Machine Total Turbo and they are set time to go. So the little Opal uh, dancing around just a little bit, 652, 100, 218 miles an hour. Brody Shirt goes 842 at 156 miles an hour. So Brody slotting in at the 15 spot. Greg staying in the number one spot from his run of yesterday as Paul Debris Jr. and Adam DeYoung get set for their run. This is Canada West door slammer action. Last qualifying session before they go into eliminations. Paul Debris Jr. from Shawnigan Lake, straight line race cars. It's a 66 Valiant. And Artex Barn Solutions, the sponsor for the Camaro in the other lane. Four is the time for Paul, 158 miles an hour, 848 for the Camaro, 848 at 158 miles an hour. As James Kennedy and Dale Jansen will be our next pair. James Kennedy from Langley calls his car the Blueberry. 2004 Grand Am. The number nine spot right now with a 777 and Dale Jansen in the number 10 spot at 780 driving the 1966 Acadian cancel which is uh, by any definition a Chevy 2 only one that's assembled in Canada Canso goes 775 so quicker than yesterday, 775, 176 miles an hour, 770 also quicker for Kennedy, 770 at 178 miles an hour. Devin Jansen and Brian Ritchie. So both cars staged and set to go. Devin over here, tower to side. Brian Ritchie of Ritchie Racing Engines. Enterprise over on the Lord Coast side of the racetrack. Brian goes eight flat, eight flat with a four. So just basically 3,000 quicker than yesterday's run. 171 miles an hour. 852 with a five, also quicker for Devin. He's in the number 18 spot. Brian in the number 11 spot right now. As Derek Shirk now comes to the line. Derek Shirk, of course, the proprietor, owner of the Titanium Auto Group, along with Bubba Speed Shop and Vancouver Car Wraps. We thank him for uh, stepping up and his participation and sponsorship here at Mission Raceway in 2022. He's driving that gorgeous looking 55 Chevy Bel Air here tower side. Jason Field, 71 Nova in the other lane. So Shirk off the line first and he is on a hard charge down the top end, stops the clocks at a 715. Hundreds better than yesterday's quick time, a 716. He's in the number four spot, Jason Field, 850 at 162 miles an hour. Peter Lacanis from Coquitlam sitting in the water box waiting for the Blue Max to come back. It's always interesting how some cars like to do their burnouts over the start line and some do not. There are some race categories where it's allowed and some where it's not. 
Canada West Door Slammers have the option. This is uh, not a track class. This is uh, a series run here at Mission. They have about six races, seven races sometimes, so they gain points. Paul Debris Jr., who we saw earlier, is the Canada West Door Slammer champion for 2021 on their abbreviated schedule of last year. So Peter Lucanis rolls forward, as does the Blue Max. Restaged, and now we're set to go. Seven for the Blue Max at 161, 859 at 154 for Peter Lucanis. So slight improvements for both drivers, but not going to necessarily make a big move on the ladder. As Paul Stretch and Tom Catney roll back from their burnouts, the uh, chrome red Camaro of Tom Catney is the car that. Derek Shirk started the year with before going into that 55 Chevy. Found a buyer for the Camaro very quickly, and that's Tom Katnick, who also has a fleet of three junior dragster drivers. So uh, uh, that is a real family enterprise. TK Performance out of Maple Ridge. Paul Stretch from Duncan, BC, on the island, a regular runner in the Canada West Door Slammer Series. Problems on the start line as the starter called both of them. He saw something that he did not like. So Paul Stretch and Tom Katnick pushed back behind the start line, told to restage again. There is, of course, courtesy staging in place. You do need to wait for the other car to pre-stage before you stage and so that's likely what happened there as somebody went in too quick so at the stripe 726 at 190 miles an hour for Paul Stretch in the Cavalier 726 quicker than his earlier or yesterday's time of uh, 735 so 760 for Tom Katnick so they go into the number five and six spot and here comes Henry Zacharias and Mark Schupiner. Henry Zacharias is driving the 53 vet. Zacharias Investments sponsoring his ride and Mark Schupiner from West Kelowna in the Chevy with no words on the side of the car. Mark's in the number 14 spot. He does tell us that Wix filters, Federal Mogul, those are some sponsors that keep him on the racetrack. So Henry rolls into pre-stage and then comes back. And getting some direction from uh, start line crew and pit members. Okay, so Henry is pre-staged. In comes Mark. We have another eight inches. Roll forwards for the stage beam. And they're both staged. Zacharias goes 763 at 176 miles an hour. 836 for Mark Schupiner. So Henry slots in to the number seven spot with that run and 14 for Mark Schupiner.
So just coming up to the line now, John DeYoung and Rod LeClaire. John having to uh, do a lot of the maintenance himself this weekend as a good portion of his crew were down in Seattle. You see Adam helping out behind the car, turning on the computer. Rod LeClaire over here, tower side, your number two qualifier with a 682. Both these cars easily in the sixes on a good pass, and John starts veering over towards the center, but keeps it together. 688, 202 miles an hour, 684 for Rod LeClaire. So they uh, managed to stay in basically the same second and third position. So your, uh, your quick eight, Greg Feel, Rod LeClaire, John DeYoung, those are the cars in the sixes. Derek Shirk, Paul Stretch, Tom Katnick, and Henry Zacharias, and James Kennedy round out the quick eight in that category out of about 20 cars that are here in Canada West Door Slammers. This is a test run for a car that is looking to get into the Door Slammer series. You do have to run 870 or quicker to be on the ladder for Canada West Door Slammers. 870 or quicker. This is a uh, test run for Scott Grant from Langley. He's gonna take his 2001 Camaro down track basically with the goal of getting more familiar with it and hopefully uh, start running the Door Slammer program. runs in the car get more comfortable in the car and Scott goes 850 850 at 166 miles an hour so car certainly capable of running that 870 or better and uh, that uh, demonstrates that as he gets more comfortable we look forward to seeing Scott Grant run the series so now that Canada West Door Slammers have completed their one and final qualifying session of the day, we have the Pro Mods coming to the line as they start their day. We should have, by my count, four Pro Mods in the program. They will be running to the eighth mile today. Eighth mile, so you can see that. It is uh, conveniently located halfway down the quarter mile, said the announcer facetiously. There's a big black mark on the, uh, an intentional black stripe on the guard wall, indicating the eighth mile. And so we're going to kick things off with Kerry Stone. Hasn't run the car for some time, actually. Brought it out, saw it run yesterday. It's a car that can run very, very quick. Bumping in. Wow, getting over close to the center line, but stays in the groove and runs 531. Got to know uh, when to get out of the gas on uh, a pro mod as you cover a lot of territory very, very quickly. So attention in the pits, Street Machine B. Street Machine B, we need you to the lanes, please. Street Machine B, to the lanes. C, you should all be there already. Keith Karecki in his Mustang, Pro Mod. <laughs> 
Tension in the pits. Tension in the pits. Driver for car number 745. We need you back to your car ASAP. Driver for 745. We need you back to your car ASAP. So Mustang getting set up. Doing all the uh, the last minute switching and the uh, crew member will go out and direct the car into the pre-stage beam. Hard to see where that is and you do not want to overstage. You want to get as much uh, notice as possible that you're getting close to it so that you can focus on all the things that have to happen. There's a lot that's going to happen in the uh, eight mile here. He is off and running and off the gas as well. Tire shake happening there at 580.85 miles an hour. So uh, all these drivers, of course, know uh, when to uh, get off the gas. But uh, when you're in the midst of uh, a race, it is uh, it can be a challenge. So it looks like uh, Nolan is uh, back from his uh, gallivanting around Alaska. Uh, how was that, by the way? Not as cold as I thought it would be. I ended up packing way too many sweaters. Oh, there you go. Well, that, that, that's the bright side of it. I'm going to turn it over to Nolan, and he'll uh, take us through uh, first round of eliminations and, uh, and do a spectacular job. So we roll into Street Machine C, random first round. So drivers are not on a ladder for this first hit. No information on file still for this driver. Uh, TCSI dialed in at a 1320, going up against Drayden Foxcroft out of Maple Ridge. And the El Camino dialed in at a 1260. Both drivers away on green lights. And Foxcroft trying to run down the driver, TCS Shy. He's at a disadvantage though on the tree. He'll go under trying to get around him. And the driver, TCS Shy, will move on to the second round. Drayden Foxcroft will be going home. Bring it up for Javet Kosachi going up against Colleen Davis. Two different Mustangs, one from 1969, one from 1970, Colleen Davis, sponsored by Eglis Sawmill with Frank Egli on the door for Javet Kosachi. Both drivers once again away on green bulbs. It was a half second advantage head start to Kosachi with Davis trying to run the 1969 Mustang down. And it will be Javet Kasachi to get there first by a country mile. Colleen Davis was nowhere close to making that pass work. A second and a half margin of victory. That is almost unheard of in bracket racing. Lucas Stone for cutting edge auto in the 1969 Chevelle out of Winfield, BC. Going to be taking it up against that driver, Lord Kosai. And the pickup goes right on the tree by four hundredths of a second. So Lucas Stone will get the free pass. Lucas Stone did also go red by a bit of a larger margin. It was an 092 to an 040 red. But of course, the pickup went red first, eliminating him from the running order. Sylvia Hookston's dialed in at a 12.55. Hookston's a regular runner in both sportsman and hot rod categories during our Summit ET racing weekends. Going up against the Cardin Auto Repair El Camino over Lord Coside. Pair of green bulbs, Hookston's on a charge, trying to run down Gordon Medijewski in the El Camino. Can't make the pass though, and the El Camino will get there first by eight one thousandths of a second. A close race there. Silver Hookins had the upper hand on the tree, but couldn't put that into a full package. 
John Sayers on a competition single in the Dodge Dart. He was due to be going up against Neil Smith in the Pete and Industries GMC, but that is not going to end up happening as he has found himself on a single pass. And I'm sure Sayer will not be complaining about that one. Patrick taking the 1967 Fairlane with the Ford engine underneath going up against Mitchell McCartan. Racing locally right out of Abbotsford, just about 10 minutes down the freeway. Patrick's had to be patient there. You see the front end bouncing up and down, trying to find some traction underneath the Fairlane, trying to run down Cartonen and a double break gout says Mitchell McCartan will go down to round number two. That'll bring up Jack Hudson, the electrician out of Edmonton, Alberta, taking up his fair lane against Francine Foytilmto, excuse me, out of North Delta in the Malibu. 1350 to a 1270 dial, 800th of a second advantage to Hodgson. Red light for Francine Foytilmto by three in tenths of a second, meaning she would have left almost as soon as that bottom bulb clicked on before the green. Jack Hodgson will get that free pass from Street Machine C into the next round. Rick Tesson in the Cougar out of Coquitlam dialed at 1244 in first round of eliminations. We'll go up against Mark Muscant in the Muscant Family Racing Studebaker over on the Lorco Lane. Two green bows, but one is significantly better than the other. At the 1,000 foot, Muscant's got a 3 tenth advantage and will take full advantage of the advantage. Goes through to round number two. That race, a whole shot win, one on the starting line. So the next pairing up will be the likes of Eric Hansen and Brady Peterson. It's Plymouth versus Ford. Hansen will leave first, dialed in at 13.30 compared to Peterson's 11.75. Peterson's away in hot pursuit of Hansen's Plymouth from North Vancouver. Can't get there though. Once again, a whole shot win. Eric Hansen had almost a 3.10 advantage on the starting line, and it was almost an exactly that advantage up at the top end. If they had closer reaction times, that would have been one close race but sometimes it's about how you launch Dennis Winton in the shaggy Bel Air at 1192 going up against Dan Dancy's 17 second machine out of Coquitlam so Winton is gonna have to be very very patient as Dancy is off and away Patience might reward him here as Dennis Winton chasing after Dancy, closing at the eighth, closing at the thousandth, alongside at the corner. Can he get there? Yes, he does. Dan Dancy goes under by 22,000, so Dennis Winton will automatically move on. Dan Dancy disqualified for breaking out. 
nothing for the driver to see. Yes, John, we do know he's dialed in at a 1370 Tony Reed in the 1967 Mustang. Also races road courses for the Sports Car Club of BC. And they race during the CACC weekends up at the road course that is two kilometers long up at the top end of the racetrack. So very local racer then for Tony Reed taking part in the Langley Old Time Loafers. Or Langley Loafers Old Time Drags as they will be the TCSI to go through. So Tony Reed will be going home. And that leaves Veronica Hodgson in the 1969 Dodge Dart prep that car by Jim Banky, dialed in at 1250 with the buy run. So a free pass into the second round. Attention to pits, attention to pits. Street Machine A, we need you to the back of staging to be laddered. Street Machine A, we need you to the back of staging to be laddered. So that wraps up Street Machine C. We move into Street Machine B. A little bit quicker, these cars. These cars capable of around 9 to 11 second passes. Most drivers with their fastest runs qualifying right around in the mid 10 second range. So as James Dobson and Susan Fougere start to stage the cars, we have a couple of more door prize winners. So listen up out there in the pits. Sylvia Gosselin and Peter Lacanis. If your names have just been called, you need to head on over to the Langley Loafers tent. So Sylvia Gosselin and Peter Lacanis, you need to make your way on down to the Langley Loafers tent. There are some prizes with your names on them. Fougere in hot pursuit of James Dobson's Ron's engine machine Camaro. But the Apps Landscape Incorporated Firebird doesn't get there. Breaks out trying to catch Dobson. As Dobson not only got there first, but beats her on a technicality as Fougere goes under the dial in. So Jordan Amos in the 1145 Dodge Dar from 1969 out of Enderby. Going to go up against Kerry. Reedlinger dialed in at 1145 in the GTO. So heads up race between these two drivers and wow. One of those drivers was a little bit better off the starting line. We'll see if that'll translate into a win for Jordan Almas. And in fact, it will. Top end will give it to the dart. Kerry Reedlinger off by half a second on the starting tree. George Hill in the Mustang going up against Dale Posnick, dialed in at a 10 20 in the Rip Raff Racing Machine. Hill with the half second delay, dialed at 970. Red light for Dale Posnick, and George Hill will move on into the next round. That'll bring up the wheel standing Rack Torch Systems Barracuda, driven up by Jim Banky out of Michigan, dialed at 10 to 13, taking it against John Vandevin's Firebird, dialed in at 10 25. Twelve hundredths of a second separating them. Wheels up, wheels down for Banky. Not a lot separated them on the tree, but I have a feeling they know who it'll be. Oh, it's not who I thought it would be. John Vandeven breaks out, goes under by eight thousandths of a second. 
And that is a killer because he had the 8,000th of a second reaction time on the tree as well and would have gotten there first had he met that dial. And Jim Banky was off by over a tenth, but going under will give him that free pass. Eric Stone's Malibu from Lake Country will go up against Rob Hodgson's Plymouth. 10.38 TCS side to a 10.89 Lord Coast side. And a red light start for Eric Stone. Rob Hodgson once again moves on into the next round. So the engine machine Ford Ranchero driven by Bill Halicki dialed at 11.10 has a one-tenth of a second advantage against Bob Ricky's Plymouth all the way out from the island in Victoria. As we continue to roll our way through Street Machine B. Both green bulbs lit underneath the tree. And it's a win for Bill Haliki at the top end. Didn't have the advantage on the tree, but stayed out in front by the top end. Bob Ricky was a bit too uh, liberal with the throttle pedal there and a bit too conservative on the binders at the top end. Bill Haliki will be able to move on into the second round. The Vega now going to go up against uh, the Chevelle. Brian Heppel going up against Walter Johnson. Johnson leads first, and Heppel goes red. So we will not be seeing the Vega back this time around. It's the Chevelle that will get the move up into round number two of Street Machine B. Now, there's a very, very familiar car, the Malfunction Acadian. Also sponsored by Albion Tireland from, uh, from Al Patterson at a 10.29, 9.16 for Kevin Garlock, his opponent in the 1971 Chevy Camaro out of Victoria. Wheels up in a big launch from Al Patterson, but it's not gonna matter. The impressive display is shadowed by a two thousandth of a second red light Kevin Garlock will get the pass to move on into the next round tough break from Al Patterson it's always a shame when you go red by just the finest of margins and that brings up Stu Funk in the Chevelle from hell to Chevy going up against Sean Cassidy's legend holding Pontiac GTO Thirty-one thou red for Sean Cassidy. Stu Funk moves on. Attention to the pits. Attention in the pits. Warren Jacobson, you are needed in the staging lanes. ASAP. Warren Jacobson, we need you in the staging lanes. So the Searles Auto Repair Camaro at an 869, driven by Blake Miller, will go up against Ross Walker in the 66 Chevy, two out of Langley, dialed in at 1015. Two green bulbs, and these are the closest reaction times together that we have seen in the elimination so far today. Miller running down. Walker makes the pass. It was an 017 to an 041 on the tree. Two hundredths of a second victory. Says the Searles Auto Repair Camaro will be going on to the next one. So John Nielsen bringing up his own Pontiac machine, going up against Brett Halicki out of Chilliwack. The 1971 Pinto Ford, 1165 to 
an 11 second dead dial in. Both drivers on green balls running down to the quarter mile. Breakout for Halicki. Nielsen goes through. Attention in the pits, attention in the pits. Street Classic A, we need you to the rear of staging to be laddered. Street Classic A, you are needed to the rear of staging to be laddered. Grant Clone out of Victoria and dialed in at 998 going up against Mike Proven's Proven Motors Nova. Little lurch to the right side of the groove of Proven as he left the lane and Clone trying to run him down. A breakout though for Clone and his efforts try to get to him. Will mean Proben will move on into the next round. Proben lost that race on the tree but won it when Clone went under the dial. That'll bring up David Cohen in the flashback Plymouth. Running a 10.07 on his car. We'll be going up against Kevin Clark in the Adventure RV Nova from 1968. He's dialed in at 10.98. David Cohen goes red by two hundredths of a second. Kevin Clark in the Adventure RV Nova will be moving on into round number two of Street Machine B. Still running in the uh, middle class for the Street Machine groupings. 38 total cars qualified to run in this class. I do believe it is the biggest class that we have on the property today. Final round, Don Almas out of Enderby, dialed in at 10 seconds flat in the dark, going up against Chris Stone in the Stone Cold Racing Dart. Oh, and the Willowbrook Motors, Winter Arena, Titanium Auto, and BG Fuel Products machine goes red by 11 thousandths of a second. Almas will move on, Chris Stone will be packing it up. Rare mistake there from a multi-time winner from Mission Raceway Park, but even the drivers that tend to win often are not immune to mistakes. Bring it up for Russell Jeffrey in the Nova, dialed in at 917, almost two seconds faster than John McCartney in the Falcon. And we'll see what two seconds faster looks like as Russell Jeffrey tries to charge down McCartney at the quarter mile does not make the pass, but John McCartney breaks out, meaning Russell Jeffrey will get the run into the next round. And that brings up Glenn Fillingham in the Hornet out of Coquitlam. He will be the last pass in Street Machine B with the bye run.
Hymns 10.2 second pass will finish up Street Machine B. We roll into Street Machine A and we'll start it off with Martin the Rosebud Acadian. And she'll be going up against Jerry F in the Mustang, a 989 to a 1090. Now, Jerry F frequently runs Super Combo during our Summit ET weekends and during the Divisional does run in the Super Street category. So we will be seeing Jerry up engaging the throttle stop in his Mustang, trying to estimate when he'll need to let that stop go so he can take off and run down to the quarter mile. Jerry Epp gets there first by four hundredths of a second, making good use of the throttle stop. That race would have been potentially won on the starting line, but still managed to even gain even a little bit more from the line. So Jerry Epp had an overall better package than Marnet Rose. Brandon Roos in the Catch-22 machine down on 1040 will go up against Dan Parsons in the Quality Racing Duster. Throttle stops in play for Parsons and two reaction times, one better than the other by a decent margin. And Dan Parsons goes through with a one ten second victory. Jacobson and Ted Buss will go up against each other. And Ted Buss goes red by half a second. Very rare mistake there for Ted Buss in the Shawnigan Trucking and Straight Line Race Cars Roadster. Warren Jacobson gets the free pass. Attention to the pits, attention to the pits. Street Classic A, you have already been called to the stage of lanes with how long it's been. You should already be in the lanes. Or calling you again. Street Classic A, you need to be in the stage of lanes. And Street Classic B, this means you are going to be on standby. And that will mean the last car in uh, Street Machine A will be the likes of Charles Sidden and the top auto repair in Kelowna, Dodge Dart, with a bye run. And leaves too soon and does not log a time, interestingly enough, on that run. Now, luckily, it doesn't matter because it was a bye run, so he does get to move on, but that's not a mistake he's going to want to repeat for the next round.
So while we await Street Classic A, we are going to make a couple of licensing passes. Starting up with Randy Briscoe in the Voodoo Bullet and Lordco Camaro RS. Racing all the way out of Chilliwack. Brief downtime in the noise. Uh, want to remind everybody that the Half Track Snack Shack is very much open for business. I believe they just started serving lunch a few minutes ago, and I'm sure they would be more than happy to make some of their excellent food over there for you. And while you're down on that end, you can take on over and visit the uh, pro shop just across the way. Pick yourself up a souvenir or some good old ice cream, which is very useful, especially on a very hot day like this. Make sure you stay hydrated out there and make sure you stay nice and cool. Attention in the pits, attention in the pits. Street Classic B, we need you in the staging lane. Street Classic B, please make your way on down to the staging lanes. That of course means Street Rod, you'll be on standby. So Bob Baxter bringing it up in the Chevy pickup going up against Vic Senra in the F100 from 1956. Of course, in Street Classic A, you're allowed body styles from 1949 all the way up to 1964. And this is a non-electronic class, so all of these drivers going to be Using only what they got in front of them. First pairing away on green lights. These are, of course, your fast eight from qualifying. And Baxter gets there first as Senra goes under by over a tenth of a second when 1047 on the 1060 dial.
Cal Barnes in the Prince George, or out of Prince George, in the That Car Bel Air, going up against Tip Corner in the Freak Child Studebaker. And Corner, win or lose, will be wanting to give thanks to his own crew chief, Ken Fletcher. And he'll break out. Cal Barnes will move on to the next round. Tim Corner was about three hundredths back. Actually, over a tenth back from Cal Barnes on the tree. Went three hundredths under. That was not ever going to pan out the way you wanted to. That is a mighty unfortunate run. Mark Brzezinger in the out of time Nova will be going up against Ryan Johnson, the Nasty Fish Racing Corvette. Wheels up launch for the Nova, doesn't set them down until well past the 60 foot. This is going to be the closest race we've had so far all day. And a breakdown gives it to Ryan Johnston. They were separated by five thousandths on the tree. And Ryan Johnson will be moving on to the next round as Brzezinger went six thou under. Scott Winterbottom will be going up against Terry Charles. Charles on the Lord Coast side, Winterbottom TCS side, the Rags to Riches Top Shop. Chevy 2 dialed in at 939. Charles in the 56 Chevy going up for the 1015. Well, look out as Scott Winterbottom got all sorts of out of shape out of the gate. Almost hit the center line, gets it back in the groove, and he'll power through and make the pass for the win. Scott Winterbottom had to really pedal that one shy of the 330 foot mark and managed to pull through and make it work. So that wraps up the Fast 8 from Street Classic. A will be set to roll now into Street Classic B. Now, these cars are allowed body styles from 1964 or older. And once again, no electronics are allowed.
Attention to the pits. Street Rod, we need you in the staging lane. Street no Rod, we need you in the lanes. And that, of course, will mean that Nostalgia Gas, you are on standby. So we roll into Street Classic B, and it's headed up first by Andy Fisher out of Abbotsford in the Chevy pickup. Dialed at an 11.80, he'll have a, a 7 tenth of a second wait as John Anir in his GMC will be leaving first, making the ferry ride out from Victoria. Both drivers away on green lights. Andy Fisher chasing down Anir. Seven thousand separated them on the tree, and that'll be enough for Andy Fisher to make the pass up at the quarter mile. Went through with an 1196 at 112 miles an hour, overtaking John Anir, and he will get it through. Greg Wessling on and off the throttle right around the eighth mile mark as uh, Yazidvasky will easily make the overtake for the victory up at the top end. Greg Wessling uh, not having the best of the best of runs there was kind of uh, feathering it right around the eighth mile, but got back in and almost held on for the win. It was only about three quarters of a tenth there separating the two drivers. Rob Dollawall in the Cruise Customs Chevrolet trying to chase down Earl James in the Henry J machine and easy victory for Earl James as Dollawall had a 7 tenth of a second reaction time to Earl James' 13 thousandth of a second reaction time. So Earl James out of Prince George will be able to move on uh, into the next round. And that'll bring up Colin Moore in the 1963 Fairlane. And he'll be facing off against Alex Stolby in the Stolby Construction Chanvelle. Moore will leave first TCS side out in a 1444. And Alex Stolby will leave shortly after. And the Chevelle trying to run down the fair lane, still closing in and gets alongside at about the thousand foot, but is not able to make the pass. Colin Moore with the whole shot win, won that race on the starting line. And that leaves the next pairing of Ralph Ehlers, the bus driver in his own Chevrolet. Down at 1372, will leave first to to Daryl Stilby. Breakout for Ehlers will give it to Stoby. Ehlers went a 13.57 with a seven on the 
72 dial, so Daryl Stobie will get to move on to the next round. Al Learmonth in the Nova will be going up against Terry Houston's in the old Beetle Bug. 1345 to a 1075. Oh, and that did not sound healthy at all from Terry Houston's. Gets back in it though and is trying to make something happen here against Al Learmonth. Breakout for earlier month will give it to Terry Hookstons. Tell you what, it sounded like he had trouble almost finding a gear around the 330 foot, but he managed to take advantage of his 2,000 of a second reaction time and pedal through for the win as Learmonth went about three tenths of a second under. Pete Leg out of Surrey, dialed in at 1298, will go up against Stephen Brown in the Black Betty Plymouth. And Leg goes two hundredths of a second red. And Stephen Brown will be able to uh, move on into the next round. So Leg uh, turning on that red bulb at the bottom of the tree. Haven't seen the red light in some time today, so Stephen Brown will be able to get that free pass. That brings up the Genesis Langley Chevy 2, also sponsored by GNL Electric. He's driven up by Steve Wilson down in the 1161. That is over five seconds to Wendy Fleenor's 1680 out of Savona in the delivery machine. Breakout for Wendy Fleenor up at the top end. We'll give it to Steve Wilson. 16.712 on the 1680 dial. As Wilf Friesen turns on the red ball by over a tenth of a second, Jay Rabander in the Chevy 2 will be able to move on. It's a big shame for the Warbird. That's a nice looking car. Would have loved to see that up uh, more times today, but there will also be uh, times further on down the line. Roland Lowen trying to stay in front of Roy Bollinger and does so. Seven thousandths of a second. Didn't have the race one on the tree, but had the better overall package. So Lowen and the Meteor will move on to the next round. And the test2.com Pontiac driven by Roy Bollinger will not be able to advance to the second round this afternoon. That brings up the next pairing of Paul Carr in the Comet going up against John Kona Walchuk and the Bionic Rogi Racing Ford has taken off trying to stay out in front of the Comet Carr charging him down and makes the pass Paul Carr moves on to the second round and that will wrap it up for 
Street Classic B. Attention to the pits, attention to the picks. Car number 604C. You are late to the staging lanes, my friend. Car number 604C. Your class has been called. You are one of the drivers we are waiting on, and you need to be in the staging lanes yesterday. Attention to the pits, attention in the pits. Nostalgia Gas, we need you to the back of staging to be ladder. Nostalgia Gas, you need to be at the back of staging to be laddered. This means Outlaw N, you're gonna be the next ones up on standby here. Move over into Street Rod. And of course, uh, Street Rod utilizing body styles all the way up to 1948. So you have to be 1948 or older on your body style. So if this is where you want to see the birthplace of Hot Rods, well, you've come to the right class. James Winter out of Aldergrove in the Jim Winter Collectible Car Appraisals 1932 Ford. Down to 1350 going up against the Homestead Custom Engines Plymouth driven by Paul Pepperscar out of Vernon. Both roadsters away and it is the Lord Tulane trying to run down Winters and makes an easy pass there by six tenths of a second up at the quarter mile. Attention to the pits, attention to the pits. Can to the West Door Slammers, can to the West Door Slammers. You're being called up to lanes five and six for your first round eliminations. Canada the West Door Slammers, we need you up to lanes five and six. Frank Eggley out of Salmon Arm going up against Martin Dykstra out of Rosedale in the YB Normal Racing Roadster. Martin Dykstra taking full advantage of the sixth out he had on the tree, makes the pass on Frank Eggley to go through for the win. He'll move on to the next round. Ken Wright out of Torrington, Alberta in the 1928 Model A dialed in at 1250 will have an almost three second uh, delay on Silcia Goslin in the Crown Victoria called Vicky Model A over on the Lorco side who's dialed in at a 1531.
both Model A's away on green lights. Wright trying to run down Goslin and does so. Both drivers staying above the dial ends. Ken Wright making a clean overtake up at the quarter mile and will go through into the next round. Almost lost that race on the starting tree. Was over three tenths of a second off, but managed to pull through and make it work. Bring up for S. Reitz and Kelly Robinson. Robinson out of Stony Plain, Alberta on the Kelly's Hot Rod Shop Ford going up against Reitz's Reitz Custom Fabrication 1937 machine. Oh, and a red light start for Kelly Robinson by half a second, so jumping the gun in a big way. Reitz will be able to move on over into the next round, and well, Kelly Robinson just lifting off past the eighth mile. And you can see the uh, red lights on for a brief moment as there was a potential issue with Reitz's car. Starting the line crew gonna go out and check the track real quick. So while we're down for this brief moment, I want to inform some of the race fans and racers out there on a developing story in one of your street machine classes. Chris Stone had gone red on his first uh, pass, but his opponent, who would have gotten the free pass in the second round, went too quick. You need to go 10 seconds or slower. He went 9.983, too fast by 17 thousandths. Stone's opponent has been disqualified, and Chris Stone has been reinstated off of a red light for the second round. It's not something you see all too often, and it's definitely a first for us, but Hey, good to see Chris Stone back in the running order. So Stone will be able to, I guess you can say he's gotten a mulligan for that second round. And so from the sounds of it, there is some debris down up uh, on the racetrack near the top end. So we will be down for a few moments to yeah, just take a look at all that, make sure everything is safe and sound for the drivers. Just while we uh, are down for a few minutes, tractors going out there, checking out the top end. It's a good time to remind everybody that you should stay hydrated and there's lots of uh, opportunity to get some water and other drinks here at Mission Raceway. Great to see all of you fans here. We certainly thank you for spending the afternoon with us. If you're over on the spectator side, you know that your admission has bought you a pit pass, so at some time during the day, hopefully you'll wander over the bridge and head into the pits. Got lots of great show cars, hot rods all sitting along the fence. There's a great selection of vehicles to take a look at, take some pictures and everything while you're there. And all along the uh, main pathway, there are uh, sponsors' tents with all kinds of merch available. So. On your way to the Half Track Snack Shack, make sure that you stop in and visit with a lot of the vendors who are here and support them buying some shirts and all sorts of other gear that is available. I see that uh, the uh, low riding Edsel is here and that means that BS Espresso is open for business. Barry and Shelley. Now that normally means it does mini donuts on the property. So uh, I, uh, I didn't quite 
get close enough to check and see if I could smell the mini donuts in process, but uh, check out BS Espresso, Barry and Shelley, located underneath the uh, pit side bleachers, the little blue booth. That's where you can probably find your mini donuts. So, uh, so we got uh, top end crew looking at uh, what's happening on the surface there, just to make sure that everything is safe. We're uh, still in the middle of Street Rod round number one, so that will continue in a bit. All of the uh, cars in the pits, though, getting ready for their next round of eliminations. Hey, you know, while you're walking in the pits, I also saw who somebody who has a uh, massive display of products, and that's the uh, Badass Garage folks. They are on the property in a big way. You want to check out, it's a uh, one-stop for all kinds of signs and vintage memorabilia. Pretty much everything and anything that you need to decorate your man cave or your babe cave or garage or, hey, whatever you want to call it. Check out what they've got, neon signs, tin signs, wood signs, and decals, die cast, new and vintage arcade machines, gas pumps, flags, antiques, and even, depending on your taste, taxidermy. It's the, uh, the best in garage decor. Check it all out. Just out behind the grandstand bleachers there, badass garage. They are on the property. If you miss them here, they are on Shook Road in Mission. Attention the pits, attention in the pits. Outlaw N, we need you to the back of staging to be laddered. Outlaw N, we need you to the rear of staging to be laddered. You know, I send a lot of people into the pit area to go walk around, take a look at everything that's there. And I always need to mention, for all competitors, if you're on any kind of a vehicle, pit speed is 10 miles per hour. Maybe that's 10 kilometers an hour. It's slow anyway. It's a safe driving speed. And all spectators... When you're going through the pits, keep in mind that the paved areas are for the vehicles to make their way to the staging lanes. So you will find yourself coming face to face with vehicles at some point in time. You need to make sure that you have got eyes all open and looking around for what's there. And you might want to not necessarily walk straight down the middle of those paved pathways because, as I say, those are for cars and uh, we don't mind you using them but the cars are going to be rolling up and down those paved laneways in the pits, so do keep in mind that there is traffic there. So Robin Redding in the Junkyard Dog Model T down at 1233 and Gary Barron in the Flooring Estimator Pontiac both rolling back into the water box. Red lights have been 
extinguished. Debris has been cleared away. All track workers are off of the race course, which means we're ready to get back to your regularly scheduled programming. Baron will get a two-second head start here over Robin Redding. And Redding could not be patient enough. Goes red by three hundredths. And Jerry Barron will be getting a freebie. Into the next round of eliminations. So Rob Monroe on a competition single was due to be going up against Chris Cook. But unfortunately, Chris Cook not able to make the call. So Rob Monroe in the white knuckle racing model A gets the free pass. And this is the bye run from your first round of eliminations in Street Rod. And Zach Joyce in the 1948 Austin with that massive rear wing. Understands they has the free pass, so as I understand, will likely just be breaking the staging beams. Technically, once that green bulb clicks on and you get the reaction time, you can just back right on out. Joyce has done just that. He's gotten the run that he needs and he is going to be moving on and we'll see him back for the second round. So listen up out there in the pits. There are some more door prize winners that we have yet to announce. Blake Miller, Javette Kosachi, and Mark Belland, if you have Heard your name called, you need to make your way on down to the Langley Loafers trailer. Once again, that is Blake Miller, Javette Kosachi, and Mark Balan. And now we roll over into Nostalgia Gas with the signature high front ends in the straight axle category here. Body styles here up to 1972. Used to run as the straight axle shootout, but now he's just running under the nostalgia gas banners. And Wayne Lamontagne for Acme Racing to the Plymouth going up against Philip Marvetz in the Tripwire 55 machine. Both drivers away on green bulbs. The Plymouth trying to run down the trip wire and Marvettes breaks out. Wayne LeMontagne will be moving on into the next round here of Nostalgia Gas.
So speaking of which, here is one of your door prize winners, Mark Beland out of Parkland Co uh, County, Alberta. Not a 10 tank to go up against Jody Wilson and the it's go time to Chevy. And Beland goes red, getting a little bit close to the left side of the groove, but it's not like it would have mattered anyway, unfortunately. Jody Wilson will move on into the next round and well, hopefully somebody can tell Beland he's got a door prize winning for him back in the pits. Attention to the pits, attention to the pits. Outlaw N, Outlaw No Box. You have been called Outlaw No Box. This is your second call to the staging lanes to be laddered. Outlaw N, we need you in the staging lanes. Dave Stomey will get an easy pass as Rick Rice in the compulsion perfect. Goes red by half a tenth. Pat McGinnis with a massive wheels up long to the El Chupacabra Dodge. But the driver out of South Slocan will easily pull through to get the win. An impressive run. He was due to go up against Steve Chase in the Shouty Merc, but a comp single for that run. So Terry Denome out of Nanaimo in the 1957 Ford. Fouled at 11 seconds flat, has the one second upper hand on Wade LaHace in his own 59 Chevy pickup out of Ladysmith. And to know I'm having a bit of trouble keeping the car engaged, so to speak. Bumps his way in and rolls straight through. Wade Lace will get the free pass and something going Seriously wrong there for Terry Denome in the Ford. Next pairing up, Ron Anthony and the Anthony Bros Chevy going up against David Sidden in the Plymouth. 1207 to a 1264. Double breakout at the top end. Anthony on Sidden, and it was David Sidden to get the win. Anthony was a 11.4, so six hundredths of a se or six tenths of a second under the dial in. But meanwhile, David Sidden only went to 12.52 on the 12.64 dial. Solo pass, comp single. Norm Fleenor was going to be going up against Phil Stewart, but once again, the Henry J not making it to the call. As Fleenor takes off on a free pass into round two.
Attention to the pits, attention to the pits. Lauren Dufour, Graham Idney, and T. Stockhausen, we need you to the staging lanes. T. Stockhausen, Lauren Dufour, and Graham Edney, you have been requested to the staging lanes. We are down for a few minutes just to do a bit of track prep. So in our classic uh, announcer broken record fashion, we're going to once again remind all of you folks out there, racers, crew members, spectators, even track workers alike, stay hydrated. We're not quite out of this heat wave just yet. Hey, thanks, Nolan. That is uh, perfect. Appreciate uh, all that coverage of first round action and uh, all sorts of... Uh, in weird picadillos that happen with lights and with times and everything else, but we uh, are set for round number two. I see that all of the Canada West door slammers are in the staging lanes as we speak. This weekend's race for the door slammers is presented by TCS Transmission Products. You know, TCS Performance Transmission is locally owned and operated. They're a business in Langley, BC, and as the leading manufacturer of performance and extreme automatic transmission parts and torque converters for over 50 years, their first priority continues to be to deliver the best possible products to their customers. TCS takes pride in manufacturing improved products for many racing, off-road, and towing applications. We also want to thank this weekend, Traveland RV. There's never been a better time to sell your RV. Traveland RV is Canada's number one RV buyer, and they'll give you top dollar for your RV with a hassle-free experience. Visit them at TravelandRV.ca. So we have got the primary sponsors for this weekend all set, but actually, you know, there's a whole host of other sponsors who make the Canada West Door Slammers race series possible. So just a quick shout out to the title sponsor, Winter Harbor Marina and RV, Artex Barn Solutions in Abbotsford, Greenlight Auto Sales and VP Race Fuel Distributor Jason Field out of Mission, Paradise Homes out of Victoria, Associated Tire and Auto from Campbell River, and Alpine Backhoe and Lance Racing out of Campbell River. Comox Valley Bobcat and Excavating in Courtney. TCS Performance Products out of Langley. And Traveland RV out of Langley, Kelowna, Airdrie and Grand Prairie. So I want to thank all of those sponsors who uh, are taking the time to invest in the Canada Door Slammers as they uh, have a uh, very good season going so far this year. It is uh, worth noting that their champion from 2021, Paul Debris Jr., want to send out congratulations to Paul for him being the 2021 champion. Attention in the pits, ProMod, we need you to the lanes. ProMod, we need you rolling into the lanes three and four. An exhibition will slot you in right behind the ProMod. So ProMod, we need you to lanes three and four as we get set for first round of eliminations for Canada West Door Slammers. Word on the radio is that we are going to be uh, back to racing in less than five minutes. So if you are walking around the pits and taking a, a gander at all of the great vehicles that are here this weekend, I would suggest that it's probably time to start directing your seats back to the seats as we are getting set for first round of eliminations. Hopefully you've had a chance to grab a bite to eat so far. If not, uh, Half Track Snack Shack is uh, ready and waiting for you. Along with the Pro Shop, I see that they've got the barbecue pit open across from the Half Track Snack Shack. So if you're looking at uh, picking up a, a Smoky, which is exactly what I did yesterday, and boy, was that ever good. A 
barbecue smoky on a bun with some grilled onions. Can't do uh, wrong with that. So uh, that is another option here at Mission Raceway. It's the Langley Loafers Old Time Drags, and I want to draw your attention to the start line. You take a look at where the Christmas tree, between the Christmas tree and the starter, and you can see the old sign, Mission Raceway. That is a holdover from the racetrack when it was the old racetrack on the other side of the highway over where the junction is that's where the original mission raceway used to be located and uh, the loafers have managed to preserve that sign from those glory days of the 60s and early 70s and hence the theme of their racing is race cars of 1972 or older. So I uh, want to welcome all of you race fans here for the Langley Loafers event. It is one of the uh, uh, more popular stops on the racing schedule throughout the year and uh, we appreciate you joining us even though it is uh, already a relatively toasty 28 degrees. I always uh, make this comparison that it's one thing for us to be sitting out in the stands and appreciating the racing. It's another thing to be standing out on the start line and doing the hard work with the, uh, the scrapers and doing the track maintenance in the middle of the heat. That is always a, a credit to the safety crew who works very hard to make sure that the racing surface is prepared in a way that is uh, not only good and sticky, but it is safe for all the racers. And as we get set for the door slammers, who are uh, running upwards of 200 miles an hour. And for some of those who are qualified, then uh, you want to know how important it is to have a good, sticky surface to be racing on. Speaking of door slammers, we have upwards of 20 who are here today, although some of them may have... Uh, fallen out of the program because of uh, carnage or whatever. We know that uh, yesterday a couple of the pro mods uh, experienced that kind of uh, carnage and it is sort of one of the hazards of racing. Fortunately, right, it was right around 4.30 that uh, two of the pro mods just got into a bit of a tangle at the top end and uh, lots of damage to Steve Horn's car. But uh, the drivers were all safe, and that is the one thing that is paramount. We always want to make sure the drivers were safe. They can always repair the cars, but it's much harder for people. So uh, it was all good, and we uh, are happy to have them back here today, although not in a racing capacity. In the door slammers, it would appear that your number one qualifier... Greg Feel may be on a buy. I haven't seen the final ladder as yet, but uh, Greg Feel setting some um, records for himself. Previously to this weekend, he had run a best of 219, and uh, he's already run 221. So, uh, Greg Feel, your number one qualifier in Canada West Door Slammers.
Okay, word on the radio is that uh, Canada West door slammers rolling underneath the bridge. Uh, we have got fast cars on a hot and sticky track. Number one qualifier, Greg Field. Number two, Rod LeClaire. Number three, John DeYoung. Number four, Derek Shirk. Five, Paul Stretch. Six, Tom Katnick. Seven, Henry Zacharias. And in the eighth position, James Kennedy. This looks to be a father-son affair. Devin Jansen, Dale Jansen. Dale is the dad. They're uh, sitting in the Acadian Canso, 1966 Acadian Canso. Dale Jansen and Devin is the son, 70 Nova. Now Dale, over on the Lord Coast side, dialed in at 778. The copper car is the quicker car. Devin's got 855, so that means Devin leaves start line first with the handicap start. Bigger engine, but not as quick as dad. So here we go, they're pre-staged. And we're set. Everybody's clean and green here as they head down track. All the way, Devin over on the TCS side. Win light for Dad. Dale Jansen picks up the win, 779. 176 miles an hour, so gives uh, the Sun the boot out of round number one in Canada West Door Slammers. Brody Shirk now and Tom Katnick. So Brody and Derek, father and son, but in this particular case, not racing each other. Brody Shirk, sponsored by Titanium Auto Group here at Tower Side, 67 Chevy, along with Bubba Speed Shop and Vancouver Car Wraps, JS Power Sports, and Rad Torque. He's in from the number 15 position, dialed in 843. Tom Katnick in the other lane. TK Performance Camaro, a car that started life under the steering of Derek Shirk, sold the car to Tom early in the season and Tom has been making hay with it ever since. Faster car, so Brody in the Chevy 2 gets the handicap start. Here comes Tom Katnick in pursuit of that Chevy 2. Does he catch him at the stripe? Does not. Wind light comes on for Brody Shirk, 843. Katnick close to the dial at 761, 181 miles an hour, but not enough to hold off that charging Chevy 2 at 843, 155 miles an hour. And that brings up Grant Howell and Peter Lacanis. So word is everything is clearing at the top end. Grant Howell not able to make the call, so this will be a competition single for Peter Lucanis. Grant Howell, the 37 Chevy, the orange and purple Chevy from Victoria, not able to make this call first round. So Peter Lucanis takes the Corvette down to the top end with an 861 on an 860 dial, 154 miles an hour. Burnout's complete for Adam DeYoung and James Kennedy. Kennedy backing up from his across the line burnout. Adam just rolling forward. Adam's driving the 67 Camaro. Another father-son combination here with both Adam and John DeYoung in the category. Sponsors for Adam, Artex Barn Solution and Total Dairy Solutions. James Kennedy. Blueberry, he calls that little 2004 Grand Am. No problems for Adam. Not able to hold the car on the start line, so Adam turns, turns it red. So James Kennedy runs it through with a 770. 178 miles an hour on a red light like that, you are allowed to go under your dial in time, which is what James did. Some ha something happened with Adam, not able to hold the car 
in the staging beam, so he just ran it through. So John DeYoung, now here comes the father, John DeYoung. They did have a matchup against each other a couple of weeks ago, and Adam put a whooping on Dad. So they found themselves in the winner's circle. Today, Adam's not going to get any further than round number one, unfortunately. So John DeYoung, 689, number three qualifier in the Canada West door slammer category. Blue Max making his uh, traditional very slow backup. line crew trying to direct the Blue Max into uh, the center of the groove where the traction is best. So pointing him all, all the way over to the left to get him into the tracks that he laid down from his original burnout. A lot of times you'll find drivers not doing that anymore in certain categories. They'll pick a, uh, a different part of the track that they like as opposed to just running in their burnout tracks. Which was so the handicap start going to the Blue Max, but here comes John DeYoung in hot pursuit and gets around him. 694 on a 689 dial. John really sharp on the tree. As a matter of fact, both of them were, but uh, John was a little sharper with a 008 reaction time against an 015. So John DeYoung carrying the family name into round number two of Canada West Door Slammers as Paul Stretch completes his burnout. And as he backs up, Mark Schupiner sitting in the water box from West Kelowna in his Chevy, sponsored by Wix Filters and Federal Mogul. He does his burnout just as Paul Stretch gets uh, closer to Start line. So Paul Stretch and uh, Mark Schubin are rolling forward. All Mid-Island Engines 2002 Cavalier, 638 cubic inch big block Chevy under the hood. Chevy power under the hood of Mark Schupiner's car as well. We've got number five qualifier, that's Paul. And Mark gets to leave first, he's the slower of the two cars. Paul Stretch in hot pursuit, chasing him down, will he get there? Yes, he does. Even though Mark had a great reaction time of 001, went too fast, broke out from the 836, ran 835. 729 was the winning time for Paul Stretch at 190 miles an hour. You can see on the return road as Henry Zacharias is getting towed back into the pits. Problems set in in the staging lanes for him, and so we've got the Canada West Door Slammer 2021 champion, Paul Debris Jr., making a competition single. Zacharias was supposed to be in the other lane. Paul Debris making this run on his own. Goes 851. 851 at 157 miles an hour. Sponsored by BD Lift Trucks. That's the Straight Line Race Cars Crew, 66 Valiant. Next pair, Derek Shirk and Jason Field. So Derek Shirk in the 55 Chevy Bel Air. Sponsored by Titanium Auto Group and Bubba Speed Shop and Chop My Rate, Rad Torque and JS Performance. In the other lane, Jason Field, 1971 Nova. It's the slower of the two cars. 
846 versus 715. So Jason Field in the Nova gets the uh, headlight uh, head start on the handicap tree. They're both clean and green here. How will it be decided at the top end? It's a win for Derek Shirk. Goes 718 with a four, 192 miles an hour. So Derek Shirk moving on to the next round in Canada West Door Slammer action. And that brings up Rod LeClaire and Brian Ritchie. Rod LeClaire, they're very happy with the car's performance today, given the air and given the temperature. I was talking with the crew in the pits, and uh, yeah, they were okay with that 782. They've got six, sorry, 682. I, they've got 687 on the reader board as they're dialing Brian Ritchie 803. So it's not always just the quicker car. It's the one that's most consistent, of course. Keep that in mind. So just being fast isn't enough. You have to be consistent. Remember, there is the handicap start in the process. So you want to be having a good reaction time. That means hitting the green light as quickly as you can, and then running as close to the dial-in that you've selected as possible. So Brian Ritchie way out in front. Here comes Rod LeClaire from behind, and will he get there? Not a chance. He was way behind. So something happened to Rod LeClaire's car. Wind light comes on for Brian Ritchie, though, so they're happy about that. Moving on to the next round. 803 on an 803 dial. I mean, that was dead on. 168 miles an hour. So, Greg Field moving up, and because he has a buy run, he is just going to break the beams and save the wear and tear on the car. All that means is he has to stage and uh, the tree will be activated and he gets the wind light on the reader board at the top end you see that green light out there and he'll back it up saving wear and tear on the car for next round attention in the pit street machine c we need you to the rear of staging to be laddered street machine c we need you to the staging lanes the rear of staging lanes to be laddered. That's Street Machine C. Bring him up. So Greg Feel uh, was talking to him before this weekend in that little 69 Opal GT. The best he'd run was 219. 219 miles an hour, and he was open to do 200. Well, yesterday he got it up to uh, uh, 200, and, or sorry, he wanted to get to 220. So he uh, got up to 221, actually, 221 miles per hour in that little short wheelbase Opal. Home-built car. It's a steel body and all. So it's uh, quite an achievement. If that car hooks up, it is a uh, mid-six-second runner easy. So... Uh, that is going to do it for first round action in Canada West Door Slammers. And they will be back in about an hour for their round number two. Round two.
Troll Mod is the category. Keith Karecki, lots of horsepower under the hood of that 67 Shelby Mustang. 814 cubic inches riding there. These are powerful machines, even more powerful than the Canada West door slammers. Pro Mod, of course, if you're talking about the national circuit, where they do the quarter mile, we're talking runs in the 580s at well over 250 miles an hour. Here we're racing Pro Mod to the eighth mile. So as I understand it, from what I heard from our uh, part-time announcer, Cole, Keith Karecki was one of the first to use this Mustang body design and it set the trend for a host of others who then picked up the style and used it in a lot of different categories from sportsman to pro mod. So let's see what uh, this Kelowna runner can do. Keith Karecki has been at a number of pro mod meets here at Mission Raceway. So he gets pre-staged, rolls forward eight inches and set. So straight down the groove and he runs 433 at 169 miles an hour and throws out the laundry to bring it to a stop. Notice that he has uh, two parachutes. I've been mentioning this from time to time. If you ever have a question about like well, who gets to have a parachute, if your car is in a class where it can run 150 miles an hour, you have to have one parachute. If you're in a class that runs 200 miles an hour and your car can run 200, you have to have two parachutes. So that's why you'll see some cars with one and some cars with two. So hypothetically then, if you had a class that could run 300 miles an hour, which let's face it, that's way outside our possibility, would you need three then? Uh, no, they, uh, they have a better, a better style parachute for the top fuel and uh, funny cars that run 300 miles an hour. So Tom Hedden, Tom Hedden, just completed his burnout. The Calber Calgary, Alberta owner, operator, Germanic Auto Bushmaster sponsorship, 94 Beretta. He put a note in here that the smoke, fire, and thunder will be Tom's 80th time at Mission Raceway Park. So he's had that car here 80 times, and it is a strong, consistent runner. 801 cubic inches under the hood. 801 cubic inches. Nitrous assisted. So Tom Hedden starts to uh, purge the nitrous, takes out any air gaps out of the system, and gets the uh, nitrous right close to the jets where they are uh, supposed to be. So I'm getting some direction from crew members, making sure that everything is on and at the uh, appropriate temperature. So getting the car staged up again. He'll be also running to the eighth mile. Pretty much down the groove, 432, 432 at 164 miles an hour as uh, he opts not to use the parachute. It's a pretty decent runoff area here at Mission, so he does have uh, some time. Attention in the pit street, Machine C. You have been called to the lanes. Street Machine C, Ken is waiting for you at the rear of staging to be ladder.
Here comes Carrie Stone from Winfield, B.C. Carrie used to run this car in, uh, I believe, Canada West Door Slammers originally and then had it set up to run at various Pro Mod events. We have not seen him for a couple of years for, well, the obvious reasons, but uh, the car has been uh, taken out of wherever it was held in storage, and we're happy to see Carrie Stone here at the Langley Loafers Old Time Drags for 2022. Terry Stone, Cutting Edge Automotive. It's a 1968 Camaro. Streamlined, of course, he bumps in. Getting a little close to the center line, if you ask me, but uh, stayed in the groove. Goes 418, 185 miles an hour. Had what appeared to be some tire slippage at the start, but was the uh, quickest of the three cars that have run so far. So the next one's going to be a pair of pro mods. Tower side, Chris Murphy. That's the 55 Chevy with the big wing from Rosedale, BC. Over here, tower side. In the other lane, Wade Sostrom from Edmonton, where he's a shop owner. 57 Bel Air. Attention in the pits, Jack Hodson. We need you to the staging lanes. Uh, ASCP, you are uh, missing, and Ken wants to see you in the staging lanes. Jack Hodson, bring him up. So it is going to be a single as Wade Sostrom moves that 57 Bel Air into the staging beams. Precision Performance Sponsorship, along with a host of others, Norm's RV Siding, all Edmonton based companies. So he's rolling forward into the stage beams. This is a super fast pro mod car. Whoa, getting a little out of shape and out of the gas. He uh, did that wisely, I think. Still ran a 413, 148 miles an hour. It was getting a little bit squirrely uh, towards the eighth mile, but uh, 100. Hundred and forty eight miles an hour at uh, four. Well, we've got the ET for the uh, quarter mile on my screen now. So now Chris Murphy's going to fire up. Attention in the pits, attention in the pits. Street Machine B. We need Street Machine B to the rear of staging to be laddered. Street Machine B as Chris Murphy completes his burnout and is rolling back into the start line area. 
had problems turning a tire yesterday for the burnout and first time out blew the belt right off of the car on the start line so almost a work in progress for Chris Murphy here Rosedale BC getting set pre-staged and now staged here we go well on and off the gas a little bit 445 149 miles an hour it started to get a little bit out of shape and he wisely pedaled it once so Chris Murphy 445 149 miles an hour and now we have a number of exhibition cars that are here just to uh, provide a uh, little bit of a different flavor because it's the Langley Loafers, of course. So the uh, blue vehicle over on the spectator side, that's the replica of the 554 Sharp and Mooneham altered pre-funny car. A lot of people say it was a precursor to uh, cars that came much later. In the uh, 60s, that was a legendary car and the original is still sitting in the Don Garlitz Museum of Drag Racing. This one hails out of North Vancouver. Luke Below, he has taken this car to nostalgia events all over the place, including the Bakersfield Hot Rod Reunion. It is as close a replica as you will ever find. The only thing that's different is he's not running nitro. In the other lane, wow, we used to see a whole pile of 41 Willys with the more traditional body style, although rarely with that level of wing on them in the 60s. So the idea here is that the AA gas supercharged category was so popular in the 60s at Indianapolis, you would have upwards of 20 of those kinds of cars running in that class. Big names like Junior Thompson, K.S. Pittman, and a host of others who ran in that category with a 41 Willys close to this. No wing, but close. And in the other lane, that Mooneham, Sharp and Mooneham car, 554. It was squirrely on nitro. Hey, it's pretty squirrely on alcohol as well. So these cars, exhibition cars, running the full quarter mile, keep an eye on each of them because uh, they're a handful at the best of times. Wow, up in smoke. Luke Below not able to grab hold of the track at all, up in smoke, but he kept his foot in it as long as he could. Left before the tree was activated, so no times for him. The 41 Willys runs an 884. Once again, make the call for Street Machine B. Street Machine B to the rear of staging to be laddered. Dan Heber in the dragster, Saskatoon runner. It's a nostalgia dragster, and I believe he has taken that dragster down to other nostalgia events, including the Hot Rod Reunion in Bakersfield, the uh, home of the Fuel and Gas Championships of all those years ago, and is it an event that is still running. Bob Smith, I believe, in the uh, Fiat, having trouble backing up. Fiat, one of those uh, perennial altered bodies that kept showing up over the 60s. 
it was uh, so popular because there were so many of them in the United States. You could pick them up for a dime, it seemed. Steel-bodied, easy to work with, and they were small and even almost aerodynamic. That is the Fiat 48 Fiat Topolino in the other lane. It's an Italian car that uh, made great use in the world of drag racing. But unfortunately for Bob, the car has lost power, so they're just pushing him behind the lines. In the meantime, Stan Heber. Well, wheels up and bouncing his way down the quarter mile. And to just keep it nice and straight even with that. And we'll clock at 8.08, 164 miles an hour. He was running in the sevens yesterday, but 8.08 in the heat of the day. Next cars down the track, Outlaw, no electronics. This is the Outlaw category, designated by 999 and quicker with body styles up to 1972. Nine cars in the category for this first round action. We're going to see Burt Worrell going up against Scott Winterbottom. Scott in the 68 Camaro from Langley, dialed in at 795. Burt Worrell over here in the 67 Nova. Little Chevy 2 sponsored by Lordco from Langley, dialed in at 914. So we'll see the blue car go first. Here comes the gold car in hot pursuit. Whoa, getting out of shape about the eighth mile and just hanging on to it, but that meant he was out of the gas for a little bit, and Burt Worrell was able to stay out in front, 916, 147 miles per hour. So the uh, job of the start line crew, not only to make sure that everything gets underway properly at the start, they keep an eye on the cars as they run down the track, and so they are always vigilant for parts pieces that might be leaving and also any smoke and what kind of smoke that might be. All right, so it's Blair Criddle and Bob Lowe now, the next pair. 9-10 is the dial and selected by Blair in the 27 Ford T from North Delta. There's a mechanic there at Precision Performance. Bob Lowe is from Maple Ridge. BDL Automotive Sponsorship, the 67 Nova. Red light start for Blair Criddle, and so wind light going to Bob Lowe right at the start. Race given away to uh, Bob, who actually left when he saw Blair leave, but his red light was a whole lot less. 8.50 was the winning time at 157 miles an hour. Andy Antel now brings his F100 to the line. His competition was supposed to be Graham Edney. Not able to make the call, so it's a competition single. Antel's been running this truck pretty regularly this year, and it's, uh, it's really coming around. 8.91 is the time. It's got a 582 cubic inch big block Chevy under the hood of that F100. Let's see how he does on this single run. Eight ninety one, 147 miles per hour, 891 for Andy Antle. So Tom Stockhausen and Keith Winterbottom.
Keith Rinderbottom, 850 on the screens. Tom Stockhausen, 945. So 66 Orange Acadian, as you saw, left first. Here comes Keith in hot pursuit. Will he catch him by the end of the quarter mile? He does. He catches him. Runs 863 at 144 miles an hour. Taking that rags to riches top shop 66 Nova into round number two of Outlaw No Electronics. Attention in the pits, attention in the pits. Street Machine A, we need you to the rear of staging to be laddered. Street Machine A, to the rear of staging to be laddered. So test pass for that car, just making a uh, test pass not in competition. Street Machine A, we need you to the rear of staging, please. And that means Street Classic A, you are on standby. So we're just loading cars in the staging lanes, getting set for round two eliminations in the street machine category. So we roll back over into Street Machine C for second round of eliminations. And up first is Lucas Stone in the Cutting Edge Auto Chevelle going up against Gord Matijewski in the Carded Auto Repair El Camino from Parkland County. Stone trying to chase down Matijewski who had the advantage on the tree and that advantage on the tree will help Gord to take the win. It's a 189 to an 043 in favor of the El Camino. New contest up at the quarter mile. That brings up Dean Kalstrom in the 1970 Charger dialed in at 1369, going up against Eric Hansen in the 1968 Plymouth dialed in at 1336.
Red light start for Dean Kalstrom and Eric Hansen will move on into the third round. And another red light for Mark Mascant. Only four thousandths of a second. John Sayer moves on. That's a, it's always a tough break when you see a red light by the slimmest of margins, just four thou. But we have had a two thou red earlier today and there is always the possibility to go a 001 as well. The amount of times we've seen those this year has been, it hurts. Veronica Hodgson in that dart prepped by Mr. Banky dialed in at a 12.56 going up against Dennis Winton in the Shaggy Bel Air. Out at 11.95. Both drivers away on green lights. And Dennis Winton off the throttle and pulling over. Something wrong with Dennis Winton. Veronica Hodgson will move along. Dennis Winton was looking to be charging down Hodgson. But uh, something goes wrong for the Bel Air as he pulls over to the right-hand side. Looks like he will just uh, coast through. Potentially to turn off near one of the earlier safety gates. And we're going to shut things down for the time being, just while safety takes a quick little look at the track. Jack Hodgson was due to be racing up against Javette Kosachi in the Frank Egley Mustang that's currently headed down track, but unable to make the call. So Jack Hodgson will not be moving on to the next round. And that may very well be the last time we see Jack Hodgson on the track for the remainder of the day. Attention to the pits, attention to the pits. Street Classic A, you are being called to the back of staging to be laddered. Street Classic A, we need you to the rear of staging to be laddered. John Nielsen. Racing up against Rob Hodgson, 11.65 to a 10.93 Pontiac versus Plymouth.
two green balls. Rob Hodgson chasing down John Nielsen. And makes the pass up at the quarter mile. Rob Hodgson was better on the tree at 249 to 183. Margin of victory up at the top end, three one hundredths of a second. So Rob Hodgson will move on. Bring up the wheel standing Rat Torque Barracuda, driven up by none other than Jim Banky down at 1015, going up against Kevin Garlock's 1971 Camaro. Garlock is closing up Banky, closing in still. Can he make the pass? No, he can't. Jim Banky, in classic Banky fashion, advantage on the starting tree. 079 to a 201, and that is enough to translate into a win in round two. So James, Do uh, James Dobson out of Abbotsford brings up the Ron's engine machine Camaro. He'll take it to Mike Proben's Proben Motors Chevy Nova. That's going to be a close raise. I tell you what, it's so close on the tree. It's going to be decided at the quarter mile. Identical reaction times of 048, and it's James Dobson to hang on for the win. 1065 to an 11 second dial in. 048 for both drivers on the reaction time. Don't see that every day, but Dobson still pulls through with six hundredths of a second to spare. So Blake Miller and the Soros Auto Repair Camaro will now race Kevin Clark in the Adventure RV Nova. Clark will leave first advantage, almost two and a half seconds. Both drivers away on green lights. And a breakout for Kevin Clark gives it to Blake Miller. Ran a 10.909 on the 11.02 dial. So here is a lucky driver, Chris Stone, went red on his first run, but his opponent was disqualified for running too fast. Chris Stone was reinstated, so the Willowbrook Motors Stone Cold Racing Dodge is back in it. Also sponsored by Winter Harbor Marina, Titanium Auto, and BG Fuel Products, helping him to run that 10-14 time. He'll be trying to charge down Bill Halicki in the engine machine Ford Ranchero. that for another stroke of luck this time it's his opponent that goes red not himself 12 foul red for bill halicki so lady luck the gift that keeps on giving it would seem for christo And something fell off of Bill Halicki's car on that run, so red lights have been turned on as safety crews quickly sprint out to collect it, and it seems that debris has been cleared away. Russell Jeffrey starts to move back to the staging lanes in the Nova, going up against Stu Funk's Chevelle from Hell. Zero seven nine red for Stu Funk sees Russell Jeffrey advancing through. Bring it up for Glenn Fillingham going up against Walter Johnson. Ten twenty nine to an eleven thirty six Hornet versus Chevelle.
Attention to the pits, attention to the pits. Street Classic B, we need you in the staging lane. Street Classic B, please make your way on down to the staging lanes. Jordan L. Moss in the dark going up against George Hill in the Mustang. Two green lights racing out to the top end. George Hill still trying to close up on Jordan L. Moss and will make the pass as Al Moss goes under by four thousandths of a second. Still rolling through Street Machine. We're now in Street Machine A as it's Warren Jacobson's Chevy 2 down at 1099 going up against Dan Parsons. Quality racing duster. Only eight hundredths of a second will separate these drivers on the tree. Dan Parsons, a frequent runner in the Super Pro and Super Combo categories in the NHRA Summit ET Series. And both drivers utilizing throttle stops. Both drivers now fully on the power, running out to the quarter mile. 015 to 058 on the tree, and that's gonna be a win for Warren Jacobson. Whole shot win for the Chevy 2. And yet another pairing separated by just over a second. Charles Sidden out of Lake Country, the shop owner of Topps Auto Repair Kelowna in the 1967 Dodge Dar going up against Jerry Epp in the Mustang. Jerry Epp once again, another frequent runner in the Super Street class in the NHRA Divisionals. Charles Sidden trying to run down Jerry Up, running that Super Street Index, and at the quarter of a mile, can Epp hang on? No, he can't! 10.490 on the 10.98 dial goes way under, and Charles Sidden will move on to the next round. Attention to the pits, attention in the pits. Canada the West Door Slammers, you're on standby. Once again, that is Canada the West Door Slammers. You are now on standby.
So continuing on as we have wrapped up Street Machine A for their semifinals, we're now into Street Classic A for their semifinals as we roll in with Bob Baxter and the 1955 Chevy pickup going up against Ryan Johnson and the Nasty Fish Racing Corvette. Four thousand the second red for Bob Baxter. Ryan Johnson moves on. Leaves the next pairing in the Street Classic A semifinals. Cal Barnes into that car, Bel Air. And Scott Winterbottom's Rags to Riches Top Shop, Chevy 2. Whoa, wheels up wide and high for Scott Winterbottom, but he goes eight thou red. Cal Barnes moves on. So Jerry Brabander dialed on the 1066 in the Chevy 2 will be leaving second to Paul Carr in the Mean Green Comet over there Lord Coast side out of Rosedale, BC. Two green bulbs on the bottom of the Christmas tree and no drivers breaking out, but you can see the green light turned on for Paul Carr getting there first by just under half a tenth. And Roland Lowen out of Aldergrove in the 1955 Meteor will go over a tenth red. So Steve Wilson's Genesis Langley Chevy 2 out of Delta. And Gino Electric will move on into round number four of Street Classic B. Stobian, the Stobian Construction Chevelle, dialed at a 1052 out of Abbotsford, going up against Doug Yazidvasky out of Surrey in the 1964 Mercury pickup truck.
10.52 to a 12.70 in favor of Yazid Vasky, and it's a red light for the pickup. There will still be free pass into the next round. So listen up down there in the pits. It's that time again, three more door prizes coming on up. Listen for your name, Devin Jansen, Chris Stone, and Lucas Stone. Devin Jansen, Chris Stone, and Lucas Stone make your way on down to the Langley Loafers trailer. They have got some door prizes that are waiting for you. Attention in the pits, attention to the pits. Street Rod A, we need you in the staging lanes. Street Rod A, we need you in the staging lanes. Colin Moore out of Chilliwack. The 1963 fair lane down to the 1444 going down track. Earl James in the Henry J out of Prince George trying to run him down. Can he make the pass to the top end? No, he can't. Double breakout. Colin Moore is through. So Stephen Brown out of a 13.75 in the Black Betty Plymouth out of Vernon, BC. Going to be racing against Andy Fisher out of Abbotsford in his Chevy pickup. And 13.75 to an 11.90 will mean, again, almost two second advantage to one Stephen Brown. A lot of wheel spin there for Stephen Brown, having a lot of trouble hooking up, and that means that Andy Fisher's already gotten around by the time they get to the eighth mile. That's the most amount of wheel spin I think we've seen all day long, and it amounts to an easy pass for Andy Fisher. So as Terry Hookson's gets set to break the beams and back out, want to say attention in the pits, attention to the pits. We need can to the west door slammers to the lanes. And stand by for Nostalgia Gas. Can to the West Door Slammers, we need you in the stage of lanes. And Nostalgia Gas, you need to uh, be on standby.
pits. Attention to pits. Nostalgia gas. You've been called to the stage of lanes. Nostalgia gas. Please make your way on down to the stage of lanes. This is your first call to lanes three and four. Attention to the pits, attention in the pits. Sean Reitz and Gary Barron, we need you in the staging lanes. Street Rod is waiting for you. So once again, Sean Reitz and Gary Barron, you are needed in the staging lanes.
It's Nolan. Nolan uh, covering on the uh, microphones while I was out getting a smoky. Uh, I had a smoky from the uh, pro shop. Yeah, they got the barbecue set up. And I had a smoky yesterday, and I was like, this is spectacular. Today, they gave me a smoky with cheese on it. And I thought, this, it, nothing goes worse with cheese. Unless I guess you're lactose intolerant, then you might want to rethink that. But uh, yeah, it was really, really good. If you have a chance, I got in, uh, there was nobody there. And as I was leaving, there was about five people in line. So popular item, that smoky off the barbecue. Nice and crunchy, well done. Just the way I like it. So it looks like we're uh, coming up to uh, Street Rod here as the tractors are exiting the track. Doing a little bit of uh, grooming, shall we say, on the racetrack. So we're coming up on the uh, street rod class. Body styles up to 1948. And we have got eight cars in the category. If I'm looking at my uh, proper sheet. So, Street Rod, and that is the next class. Odd number of cars in this category. Rob Monroe gets the buy run. He is on track right now. Langley runner, white knuckle racing, 31 Model A. So Robin Rowe heads down track on the bye, and he will run it through with a 9.12. 9.12 with a 7, 145 miles an hour. So the next pair was supposed to be Paul Papscar and Zach Joyce. Well, as you can see, Zach not able to make the call. We saw his problems earlier, so not able to make that call. So Paul will just run it through on a competition single. Goes 1039 at 129 miles an hour.
So as you can see, yet another competition single, the carnage this weekend has been uh, quite high. Lots of cars not able to make it back to the next round of competition, either for breakage or whatever, parts problems. So uh, Ken Wright here making his competition single. Torrington, Alberta is home base for Ken. 1928 Model A, and he stops the clocks at 12.09. 12.09, 101 miles an hour. So Ken Wright. And this is our last pair in the category, Martin Dykstra and Jerry Barron. Barron from Langley, leaving the line first on the handicap tree. Pouring estimator is well out in front of Martin Dykstra, who is now in pursuit of that 38 Pontiac. And he manages to get around him too, goes 9.58 for the win, 134 miles an hour. So Martin Dykstra advancing into the next round as we get set for Nostalgia Gas. By run here for the Plymouth. Wheels up, high nose on the Nostalgia Gas category. We're just sort of harkening back to those good old days of gasser racing in the 60s. 1175, 115 miles an hour. Wayne Lamontang from Chemanus. And so he gets that by run as we get set for first pair. I hope everyone has uh, taken notice of the teeth in the front grill of that pickup. Yeah, if you've uh, had to watch the Cars movie, uh, you'll know and recognize that uh, what he's going after there. What's the look? Uh, the tow mater car, truck, I should say. So uh, it's a nice little touch. Make it personal, right? David Sidden and Wade LaHaye's. Wade's the contractor with the Chevy pickup. In the other lane, it's a 49 Plymouth that got the handicap start. Will it be Sidden or will it be LaHaye's? It'll be Sidden. Goes 12, 6 0 at 105 miles an hour for the win. Hey, attention in the pits. Outlaw N. Outlaw N. We need you. Back to the lanes to be laddered. Outlaw N. Bring him up to be laddered. <laughs> so attention in the pits. We are now calling Pro Mod and Exhibition to lanes five and six to fall in right behind Canada West Door Slammers. Pro Mod and Exhibition. We could uh, get you in right behind Canada West Door Slammers. So here we go with Dave Stoby. He's driving the little Corvette from Kamloops. It's 56 vet. Dialed in at 11.08 and Norm Fleenorm. Norm will get the handicap start. Four on Dave and Dave goes red. Quite a bit red too. So he hands Norm the win. Norm actually runs the 56 out to 12.35. 109 miles an hour. L. 
old Chupacabra 2. Coming up, watch the wheels uh, lift on this one. In the other lane, nice 55 gasser. Jody Wilson, it's time to go to El Chupacabra, the uh, Nostalgia Gas winner in 2019. He's going to go another round here as well. 1077 at 123 miles an hour. Pat McGinnis from Slocan, BC. Going to take that 64 Dodge Polara into the next round in Nostalgia Gas. So we're doing just a quick uh, check of the racing surface once again as we get set for some faster cars to head down the track. I see Canada West door slammers all in the staging lanes. And that, that will be our uh, next runners, I believe. Hey, didn't have the opportunity, uh, if you are watching us online on the uh, MRP Lord Co. TV channel, I want to give a big shout out to the great folks at Valley Tech who produce our visuals for our growing library of video events. You can check us out there. The channel is sponsored by Lord Co. And... Uh, Valley Tech are producers for that, and it is absolutely a spectacular job that they do. Attention in the pits, Outlaw N. Outlaw N, we need you to the staging lanes, please. Outlaw N, bring them up to the staging lanes. Always take the opportunity to uh, thank you folks for joining us here this weekend. You might want to uh, mark another day on your calendar, and that is August 18th, 19th, 20th, and 21st. That is the uh, time that we are running Smoke, Fire, and Thunder, another one of our uh, annual events that draws a good crowd. It is a uh, primarily Saturday and Sunday event. Saturday night, of course, the Jets under fire. We'll have uh, some funny cars here. We're going to have some a nitro top fuel dragster and all sorts of things to honor the name Smoke, Fire, and Thunder. So uh, mark your weekend, August 19th, 20th, and 21st. That weekend, we'll also be hosting the 
race 10 and 11 of the NHRA Summit ET Series, along with the uh, Super Shifters, Super Combo, and Door Slammers making another appearance here. Attention to the pit street, Machine C. This is your call. Bring them up to the rear of staging to be laddered. Street, Machine C. Bring them up to be laddered. So I hear cars fired up, and that is Canada West Door Slammers this weekend, presented by TCS Transmission Products. We start off the first pair, Brian Ritchie and Paul Debris Jr. Paul Debris, your 2021 West Coast Door Slammer champion here on the tower side. Debris Jr. from Shawnigan Lake. Straight line race cars. It's a 66 Valiant with 565 cubic inches of big block Chevy power. And also one of the uh, biggest rear spoilers that you are probably going to see here today or maybe at any race. That's a pretty massive spoiler that they use on the back of that Valiant. In the other lane, Brian Ritchie going for the more pro stockian wing at the back of the car because of the aerodynamic and setup differences. Richie from Port Coquitlam. It's the Richie Racing Engines team, 68 Chevelle, and the handicap is going to be going to Paul Bree Jr. He turns the bold red, 005 red, and so Ryan Richie Moving on to the next round, runs an 8.05 on an 8.04 dial, 171 miles an hour. Hey, there's a burnout, eh? Greg Feel in his 69 Opal GT loves to do the burnouts. He'll be backing up in the other lane. Brody Shirk got his 67 Chevy. Just waiting behind the line. Sponsored by Titanium Auto Group, Bubba Speed Shop. Vancouver Car Wraps, JS, and Rad Tour. Greg Field in the Opal. Well, he's got sponsorship as well from Active Care Auto, Jubilee RV, Acumen Machine, and Total Turbo, along with Lord Co. Got big, big tires in a uh, widened and lowered 69 Opal GT. That's a home build car. Set a record for himself. He wanted to do. 220, 220 miles per hour, and he's already done 221. So he's uh, he's liking the conditions and he's liking his chances of going on to the next round. But then Brody Shirk might have something to say about that. So uh, let's uh, let's not just do it on paper. Let's do it on the racetrack. All right. Handicap is going to go to Brody. Dialed in at 8.43, so Greg's going to have to be very patient at the start line because he's going to see Brody a long ways down the track. Here goes Greg. He'll bump in. And we're set. Wow, Greg Feel. Ooh, getting a little out of shape, but not taking his foot out of it. Not able to get around Brody, though. 
Greg Field at a reaction time of 001, but it was not enough to get around Brody's shirt. Runs an 8.43 to win at 155 miles an hour. You can tell by the mile per hour for Greg Field, 182, that he was well off the gas and shy of that 220 mark. So that's uh, that's the way that we race them in, in person, on the track, not on paper. Paul Stretch now and Peter Lucanis. Peter from Coquitlam in the Corvette. Paul Stretch from Duncan in the Cavalier. 861 is the time for the Corvette, 730 for the Cavalier. And that means that uh, the that 63 Transporters Logistics Corvette is going to be leaving first. He'll have the handicap start. If they both leave the start line with perfect reaction times and do their dial, they'll end up at the top end at exactly the same time. But that rarely happens. Wind light comes on for Peter Lacanis. 865, 154 miles an hour. So the Corvette going rounds. Margin of victory, six thousandths of a second. So. Paul Stretch was uh, closing in fast. All he needed was another 10 feet, perhaps, and he could have been around that car. Here's John DeYoung now and James Kennedy. Kennedy in the 2004 Grand Am. John DeYoung in the 68 Camaro. Over in the other lane, Adam. He's driving the 67 Camaro, and he's out of competition. Went out in the first round. So John DeYoung, one of the uh, top three qualifiers today, 695 on the uh, dial, 771 for James Kennedy. So Kennedy will be out of the gate first. John DeYoung. They're both straight in the groove, and the wind light comes on for John DeYoung. 713, 171 miles an hour as uh, John throws out the laundry. James saving it. Here comes Derek Shirk and Dale Jansen. Derek in the 55 Bel Air. Dale, 66 Acadian, Canso. 781 for Dale Jansen and 718 for Derek. The handicap is going to go to the copper colored car on the Lord Coast side of the racetrack. Red, 002 Red, handing the win over to Derek, who runs it through with a 723, 191 miles an hour for that 55 Chevy. So Derek will move on and head into the next round. And that is going to do it for door slammer action. Canada West door slammers. Done for another round. Now, Scott Grant was talking to Scott in the pits. They've uh, just been getting as many runs on this car as possible. Picked it up from a racer in Ontario. And uh, they need to uh, just become more and more familiar, get more seat time. And so that's exactly what he's doing. He's already run this morning, 8.50. So it's a car that's easily capable of getting into the uh, Canada West door slammer program of 870 or better he said it uh, has run in uh, with its previous owners 840 so it can even get into the uh, high sevens but uh, at this point they're just uh, getting more seat time getting more comfortable
Attention in the pits. Gord Manachewski. Gord Manachewski. Ken is waiting for you in the staging lanes. We need you in the staging lanes. Bring him up. See the safety crew out at the top end, just investigating uh, what's happened out there. Some parts and pieces, perhaps, uh, just waiting for a heads up that we're good to go. So we did have a car that was stopped at the top end and we just needed to attend to that, get him towed off of the racing surface and that is now done. Safety at the top end says fire him up, we're good to go. And uh, here we go with Scott's run. As I was saying, he ran an 8.50 earlier today as he uh, works to get more seat time and we're set to go with uh, Scott's run. So Scott picked up this car earlier in the year. Tends to leave very soft, but uh, runs hard after half track. 857, 166 miles an hour, sort of uh, a nice, smooth, and easy run. As I say, it seems to leave soft, but uh, that's the way they've got that set up. His reaction time needs uh, maybe a little bit of work but when you're just worried about getting seat time you just want to make the car go down you're not looking to uh, chop the tree down with a great reaction time so Langley's Scott Grant got his uh, 2001 Camaro sorted out and uh, we hope to see him in the program at some future Canada West door slammer events pro mod now pro mod is going to be hitting the track as we uh, get set for there Next round.
We're kicking things off. Pause for burnout. Tom Mahedon from Calgary. Tom Mahedon, business owner there. Germanic Auto and Bushmaster. It's a 94 Beretta that he uh, has been campaigning for a few years. 801 cubic inches under the hood of that Beretta, nitrous assisted. So he has run so far this weekend. 432, 427, 424, 9. All of those have been at the eighth mile as we are running Pro Mod uh, just to the eighth mile this weekend. So just getting set for Tom Hedden to make his pass here to the eighth mile mark. That's the black stripe on the concrete wall that you can see that uh, coincidentally is halfway down the quarter mile. Yeah, that's right. 1,320 feet for the quarter, 660 feet for the eighth mile. Tom Hedden has run as quick as 4.24.9. And let's see if he's able to improve on that this time around. Dancing around just slightly, 425 again. 425.6 at 171 miles per hour on a track that is uh, probably upwards of 130 degrees, so nice and straight. Hey, listen, I got a serious announcement for all you racers in the pits. And this is, uh, this is a critical announcement, all right? We, when we call you to the lanes, we need you to come to the lanes ASAP. We have called Street Machine C to the lanes to be laddered, and uh, there are very few of you that have made that call. And Ken, who's waiting for you there, that was Street Machine B that we called. Now, Ken, who's waiting there for you, he, you know, while he likes the sun, he doesn't like standing in the sun waiting for you to show up. So we asked at the beginning, and we ask now, when we make the call to the lanes, please respond as quickly as you can to get to the lanes. We're waiting for you, and if you're not there, we'll run without you. So Andy Antel, F100, runs an 895, 147 miles an hour. It's amazing to see the development of that vehicle. When he first brought it out a couple of years ago, it was, uh, it was hit and miss, and they've got that thing tuned up, so it's running real consistently, and it's running fast, 895, 147 miles an hour. Outlaw N. No electronics in this outlaw category. Attention in the pits, Street Machine B. 
Street Machine B, we have called you to the lanes. Bring them up, Street Machine B. Problem set in for Burt Worrell, and he just uh, backs out of the water box, not able to make that run. And Keith Winterbottom takes it down the quarter mile for a competition single and runs an 868, 157 miles an hour. So Burt Worrell able to drive the car back into the pits, but Knew that there was something wrong with it and did not want to take a chance blowing it up down the quarter mile somewhere. And that makes... Next up, Bob Love. BDL Automotive. And this is a, uh, a buy, 67 Nova. So what Bob did, of course, is uh, knowing that he had a buy run, not a competition single, but a buy run. He just took the tree, saved the wear and tear on the car, and uh, he'll take it back into the pits and get ready for the next round. And that's going to take care of Outlaw N. We're going to go next into Street Machine C. Street Machine C, we've got five runners left in competition. Five of them. John Sayer, Kusachi, Hodgson, Hansen, and Matajewski. Those are the five runners that we are uh, waiting for. And uh, we've got John Sayer and Yvette Kusachi. John Sayer waits patiently. Handicap start going to Yvette Kusachi. Mustang is heading down track and already John Sayer is around her. And we'll get there first with a 1256, 78 miles an hour. So John Sayer with a perfect reaction time. Undoubtedly helping get around uh, the uh, Mustang, but it uh, was well in hand. So Veronica Hodgson now. Winlight comes on for Veronica Hodgson to advance into the next round. 1267, 103 miles per hour. She's got a note on her tech card that the 69 dart was prepped by Jim Benke. So uh, Jim put his magic touch on that tune-up, and Veronica is going into the next round. And 
now Gordon Manajewski and Eric Hansen to battle down the quarter mile. You saw the handicap for Gord. And right now, as it looks, Eric Hansen is out in front and does indeed pick up the win, 1349. Attention in the pits. We're looking for a car for the next round. 427 is the car number. G Hill. We need you in the lanes. So attention in the pits. If uh, you are in in a pro mod and you would like to make a pass we uh, have got lane six open for you So he starts to roll over into Street Machine B. So attention in the pits, attention in the pits. Street Machine A finalists and Street Classic finalists. We need you 
to the staging lanes, please. Street Machine A finalists and Street Classic A finalists, bring them up to the staging lanes. Glenn Fillingham in the 1970 Hornet down to Coquitlam Dowd at a 10.33. Taking it to James Dobson in the Ron's Engine Machine Camaro. And in the pit street classic b we need you to the rear of staging as well for your laddering process so street machine a street street classic a finalist to the lanes please and street machine b to the rear of staging both drivers away on green lights and a double breakout will give it to james dobson the last offender only sixth hour under for Dobson, ran a 10.71 with a four on the 10.72 dial. Eight foul under for Glenn Fillion, went 10.32 with a two on the 10.33. Blake Miller, India Stroll's auto repair Camaro dialed in the 8.74, going up against Chris Stone of the Stone Cold Racing Dodge. Stone went red, was reinstated, had his opponent go red, seeing if he can survive one more round. He's going to have to race for this one. Top end it is. Two green lights. Less than 100 separated them. Stone trying to stay in front. Oh, but he can't get there. Blake Miller runs a 2,000 second time. 2,000 second up at the top end. 8.753 on the 874 dial. Jim Banky and the Barracuda off and away. Russell Jeffrey in the Nova trying to chase him down. And Jim Banky gets there first. Whole shot win for the Rad Torque Systems Barracuda. George Hill out of Prince George in the Mustang. Dialed at 9-7-0, racing Rob Hodgson in the Plymouth. Two green lights. Rob Hodgson still out in front, trying to stay there. Can't stay in front. George Hill ticks on the wind bulb. TCS side. Logs down a 9.703 on the 970 dial. So George Hill is on point with his dial ins. Looks like that will wrap up Street Machine B. I believe that means up next will be. Some more exhibition runs and maybe a couple of door slammers even. So, of course, that means we're going to be down for a bit of track prep for the time being. And we'll be uh, back up and running shortly.
Well, we got a bit of quiet time out here at the moment. Want to uh, make the announcement for all the door slammers up in the pits. Can to the West door slammers, you are now on a 10 minute standby call. Can to the West door slammers, this is your 10 minute standby call.
Uh, attention the pits, attention in the pits. Street Rod and Nostalgia Gas, you are being called to the staging lanes. Street Rod and Nostalgia Gas, we need you both in the staging lanes.
so as we roll back into street classic this time it's for the final all the marbles to play street classic a cal barnes out of prince george in the that car bel air going up against ryan johnson in the nasty fish racing and investors group corvette Barnes dialed in at 10 seconds. We'll leave first to Ryan Johnson, 8.39. Attention to the pits, attention to the pits. Outlaw in. We need you in the staging lanes. Outlaw, no box. We need you in the staging lanes. Both finalists pre-staged. Fully staged. Two green lights, this class decided up at the quarter mile. Johnson is closing still, and he makes the pass. Ryan Johnson wins Street Classic A in the Langley Loafers Old Time Drags in 2022. And more developing news in your Street Machine B category. We already have one disqualification for somebody running too quickly earlier today. That allowed Chris Stone back in. Well, now Rob Hodgson has found himself a stroke of luck as we've had a second offender. George Hill went a 9-7. He is not allowed to run under a 10-second dial, so George Hill has been disqualified from Street Machine B and Rob Hodgson has been reinstated. So he'll be moving on into the next round of Street Machine B. Attention in the pits. Attention in the pits. Canada West door slammers. It is time for you. We need you back in the lanes. All runners who are still in competition, back to five and six, please. Canada West door slammers to the lanes. Lanes five and six, please. So here we go. We're working our way through the uh, various categories that are unique to this event. The uh, Loafers Old Time Drags. It, uh, it includes classes that only run at this event and uh, obviously cars that you'll only see at this event as well. Hey, I see two pro mods sitting under the bridge. That's right. We get set to go fast and we go furious, all right? That's the plan, anyway.
But once again, I'm listening to the radio chatter, and it says they're going to they're gonna send a pair. So uh, two of them at the same time heading down to the uh, eighth-mile mark. Looks like it's Wade Sostrom over on the spectator side, the Lord Co. Lane. And Chris Murphy over here, tower side. Chris was has been struggling. He, uh, he's been struggling to get that cart to perform. Managed to turn the tire nicely on that one. There's Wade Sostrom from Edmonton. Ed's driving that 57 Bel Air, sponsored by Precision Performance, Norm's RV, Riverstone Garden Center, Mobile One Race Oil, and Dale Briston Racing in Edmonton. He's the number one qualifier. Quickest car on the property, 4.07 at the eighth mile. In this lane, tower side, 4.45 is the quickest that Chris Murphy has done. They continue to uh, get that car up to the level of performance that they would like to see. Big blowers, injectors sitting out on top of the cars, 477 cubic inches underneath the hood of Chris Murphy. Sostrom, 522 cubic inches. And once again, Chris Murphy having problems. The car losing fire. So it will be, at this point anyway, a solo from Wade Sostrom. Run a best of 4.07. Getting close to the center and hanging on for dear life as he goes through with a 404, 183 miles an hour. So even though getting out of the groove and a little bit squirrely, he kept his foot in it and still ran quicker than his previous quick time. So 404 with a nine at 183 miles an hour in the eighth mile. That's a that's an amazing run. You got to think. What would that car be doing in the quarter mile if it were straight? Exhibition cars now, so uh, unfortunate for Chris Murphy as they continue to work out the bugs on that car. But we have got some uh, amazing exhibition cars here. We talked about both of them earlier, the 554 replica of the uh, Sharp and Mooneham Engineering. Or is it Mooneham Sharp Engineering? Yeah, well, it's one of those for sure. This is a replica of that legendary car. It is, uh, the, the original is currently sitting in the Don Garlitz Museum of Drag Racing in Ocala, Florida. But Luke Below has been uh, campaigning this car for a number of years. Uh, seen it down in Bakersfield at the Hot Rod Reunion. And uh, he's been here more than a few times. 
It is uh, as close as a replica that you will ever find for this vehicle. 554 Legendary claims uh, have been made about this vehicle that it is the uh, progenitor of Altered's, the progenitor of Funny Cars, the progenitor of so many other classes because it was just a unique vehicle for its time. In the 60s, it ran on nitro. Here we're running on alcohol or methanol, I believe. And in this lane, close to the tower, the 41 Willys. Now you have to keep in mind that when that 554 car was in its heyday, the smoke that you saw in that burnout would have consisted of the whole run. That's right, the whole quarter mile would have been a smoker like that because the clutches were not hooking up and so they were relying on the tires to do all the spinning so there's not to grab the clutch. So just get a sample now and that's one of the reasons I guess he does a nice long burnout. I was gonna say about the 41 Willys that you see here. There were so many 41 Willys with that double A gas supercharged designation. Uh, they were as common as house flies in the 60s. So many racers were using that body style once again because it was so easy to get a hold of. It was inexpensive to modify for racing and it was somewhat slippery when it came to aerodynamics. So here we go, two exhibition cars just to give you a taste what racing would have been like in the 60s on a track that is super hot right now. We've got the Willys that's pre-staged along with the 554 and we are set. So Stan Heber behind the wheel of his front engine dragster, Chevrolet powered. He is uh, going to blast down the track, has run in the sevens with that vehicle. I think he was doing seven, let's see, uh, 770 I thought I saw him do on Saturday early. Today, his last run was 793. It's a small slick on that car, so try to grab hold of all the traction that it possibly can. 832, 832 at 155 miles an hour on this hot track. It looks like he, uh, he hit the brakes a little bit hard at the top end. Tires puffed a little bit, but uh, he should be uh, clearing the top end. There he goes.
Hey, so from what I can tell, and from what I know, and what the computer screen tells me, this is our final round in Street Machine A. Handicap going to Warren Jacobson. And Charles Sidden is in pursuit. Will he get around that little Chevy 2? He does not. Warren Jacobson pours on the power at the top end. Margin of victory, though, only 34 ten thousandths of a second. So Charles Sidden was gaining ground, and had that track been just a few more feet long, Sidden would have been able to get around Jacobson. But as it is, he held him off, ran 11.03 with a 3, 134 miles an hour, and Warren Jacobson is our winner in Street Machine A. Now we go with Street Classic B. Colin Moore and Steve Wilson. Moore leaving the line now with a great handicap and Wilson turning on the red ball. So Winlight going over to Colin Moore in the 63 fair lane, getting the automatic win as the red light comes on for Steve Wilson. So 14.83 for Colin Moore, the 63 fair lane going one more round. As Daryl Stobie now and Andy Fisher get set for their pairing. Stobie has 10.58 and Fisher 11.95. Carol Stobie from Abbotsford. Stobie Construction sponsoring the uh, 64 Chevelle. They're both staged and the truck gets the handicap start, but Andy Fisher left too soon, turned the red light on. So you see that green light on the scoreboard. That's the win light for Daryl Stoby to go into the next round. 1057 at 122 miles an hour. 1057 with a six for Daryl Stoby to advance into the next round as Paul Carr rolls up in his gorgeous little 63 Mercury Comet. Had a chance uh, some races back to talk to Paul and look at the inside. The interior is absolutely amazing. I seem to recall that there are seat belts and uh, primitive seats in the back, so you could actually take that car on the street. 11.31 for the win. 121 miles an hour for Paul Carr from Rosedale. So the 63 Comet going into the semifinals. That's going to do it for Street Classic. So here we go, Street Rod, Rob Monroe, and Ken Wright. Rob Monroe over here, tower side, driving that 31 Model A. This pause for the burnout there. 9.12 is the time for Rob Monroe at 11.99 for Ken Wright. here at the start line. Wind light turns on for Rob Monroe. So the Langley runner gets the win. Next pair, Martin Dykstra and Paul Papperscar. Paul Homestead Custom Engines from Vernon in the uh, Black 32 Plymouth on 
The spectator's side, Rosedale, BC is home for Martin Dykstra. They leave with green lights on each side. So it's going to be decided at the strike with Martin Dykstra picking up the win, running a 9.60 at 133 miles an hour. Once again, very tight. Paul was uh, running so fast to stay ahead. The margin of victory was seven thousandths of a second, or if you want to get technical, 73 ten thousandths of a second. Martin Dykstra managed to uh, get around Paul. So that sets up the final in Street Rod. Here we go with the uh, gassers now. Nostalgia gas class. In the semifinals, four cars left. Wayne Lamontang over here, tower side. David Sidden over on the spectator side. The orange 65 Plymouth. We'll have to be patient. Wait there, wait there. And everybody's still green here as David Sidden gets the handicap start. Gets to start racing down the quarter mile ahead of Lamontang. And manages to stay out there with a 1266, 104 miles per hour. Attention in the pits. This is the call you've been waiting for. All competitors, if you are still in competition, either a, a semi or a final, we need you back to the lanes ASAP. All competitors, back to the staging lanes right now, please. Well, Pat McInnes using up a whole lot of the racetrack to uh, get to the end of the quarter mile, but still manages to get ahead of Norm Fleernor. So Pat McInnes takes the El Chupacabra two station wagon to the winner, uh, well, to the next round at 1085. He was the Nostalgia Gas winner in 2019, and he's uh, hoping to do that again this year. Okay, the category is Outlaw N. The N stands for no box or no electronics. So everything is man handled or girl handled or woman handled, however you want to say it. No electronics coming into play here. It's Bob Lowe and Andy Antel get set for their pairing. Andy Antel in the F100. Antel towing sponsored pickup. 1965, 582 cubic inch big block Chevy under the hood. And Bob Lowe, 582 cubic inches there as well. So pound for pound, they're, uh, they're right about the same. I tend to think though that pickup might be a couple pounds heavier. Red light start for Bob Lowe. So, Bob just so anxious. They were uh, not very far apart on the dial in 894 for Andy Antle to uh, go into the final. And here is the by run with three cars left in competition. So it will be Keith Winterbottom from Maple Ridge, 66 Nova. Just checking to see he's going to, uh, yes, that's what he's going to do, take the tree. So his prerogative in the odd number of arrangement, he can take the tree and does not have to run the uh, full quarter mile. 
So Door Slammers, Canada West Door Slammers, presented this weekend by TCS Transmission Products. That's coming up next here in our run order. So door slammer action coming up just around the corner here. We've got a bunch of finals that will be running. Street Rod A, Nostalgia Gas. I'm looking at finals there. We're working our way down to the very last runs in so many of the classes. So we do have a semi. Hey, once again, attention to the pits. If you're in the finals, if you're in a semi or in the finals, if you're still in competition, we need you back in the staging lanes, right? Bring them up to the staging lanes, get back and see Ken. I mentioned earlier, Ken, he doesn't mind the sun, but he sure hates standing out there in the sun waiting for someone. So if you're in the finals, if you're still in competition, head back to the staging lanes ASAP so we can complete the run order. We're into the next round of Canada West Door Slammers. This would be round number three, and Brian Ritchie gets the bye run here. So whether he makes the run all the way down or just takes the tree, uh, that's yet to be decided, although my money is on him making the run, given the nature of that burnout. Normally, if you're just taking the tree, you just do a very short burnout, clear to the tires, and then roll up out of the groove so that you can back off the start line but uh, Brian did a full pull on that burnout so he is uh, probably looking to make a uh, full run Port Coquitlam runner has got 805 on the window and he is uh, certainly heading all the way under power 807 807 so Take a look at his uh, times for the day, or for the weekend, 8.08, 8 flat, 8 flat, and 8.07. So the car is a bracket car. Ryan Ritchie moving on to the semifinals of Door Slammers. So next pair is going to be uh, Peter Lacanis and John DeYoung. I see uh, Lacanis sitting in the uh, transporter logistics vet, sitting in the water. I suspect that John DeYoung still in the uh, under, behind the tower, and uh, he'll be rolling out here momentarily. John doing double duty. 
believe I heard that most of his crew were down in Seattle this weekend for the national event. And so he was having to uh, uh, get his hands a lot more dirty than he normally would doing things that he normally doesn't do. Of course, Adam was there to help along his son. Adam was out of competition earlier in the day. And uh, uh, that, while well, that's good for John, it was bad for Adam. A couple of races ago, the two of them, father and son, met in the final, and Adam put it to the dad. And so uh, that was awful fun to watch as well. So here's John DeYoung, set to do his burnout. So here we go, John DeYoung and Peter Lucanis. John in the 68 Camaro, sponsored by Total Dairy Solutions. All right, so you see the starter backing John DeYoung up. What that is is courtesy staging. John inadvertently took the car in too deep and actually lit the second bulb. He has to wait as far as courtesy for the other card is pre-stage, and then they can all stage together. So John having to sit patiently as Peter got that big handicap start and managed to stay out in front. 8.66.9 for Peter Lucanis. Kept that 63 vet planted way out in front partially because of his reaction time. He had a 005 reaction time and ran 866, so two hundredths off his time on the dial and five thou on the tree. So really, really great package there. John DeYoung, well, a little bit, uh, he wasn't tardy, 036 reaction time, but 700 on a 698. When you factor in the reaction time, that's what kept him behind Peter Lucanis. So Corvette going into the next round, semifinals in door slammers. And here comes the next pair. And it is a father-son combination. We got Derek over here, the father on the tower side. Brody, son on the spectator side. 55 Chevy versus 67 Chevy. Handicap going to Brody. He leaves, here comes Derek. It is going to be at the stripe so close. And Brody takes out his father, runs an 851. Derek, trying to stay ahead, ran under the dial, 723 on a 724 dial. So Brody Shirk going into the next round, putting out his dad in competition. So that is going to do it for door slammer action. Once again, a reminder, everybody who's still in competition, Ken has got his best smiling face on for you in the staging lanes. You do not want to see a frown from Ken. So all cars still left in competition. We need you back in the staging lanes ASAP. So we roll back over into Street Machine B. Blake Miller in the Searles Auto Repair Camaro going up against Rob Hodgson in the Plymouth. 875 to the 1098. Hodgson has just over a two second head start. And Miller's patience may be rewarded. Charging down Rob Hodgson. Oh, but he breaks out trying to get by him when eighth thou under. Such a shame if he had been able to keep that car above the dial and he would have still bested him by about a quarter 
of a 10. Rob Hodge will move on to the next round. Bring it up for Jim Banky and James Dobson. The wheel standing Rat Torque Barracuda already pre-staged against the bronze engine machine Camaro. And Banky goes nine. Thou red on the tree. And Banky is eliminated from competition. James Dobson will be moving on to the final. So we roll back into Street Machine C as we've just wrapped up the semifinals for Street Machine B. Slowing it down just a little bit. And well, speaking of Jim Banky, this driver TCSI was very much prepped by Mr. Banky. It's Veronica Hodgson in her Dodge Dart. Local from Mission going up against Eric Hansen in the Plymouth from North Vancouver. Hodgson will be the chasing car, 1267 compared to Eric Hansen, who has a 1342 on the driver's side window. Two green lights. Hodgson with the upper hand by about a tenth of a second. That's more than enough to make the pass. Veronica Hodgson overtakes Eric Hansen at the top end and will move on into the next round. I do believe that means that it'll be Veronica Hodgson versus John Sayer, who has the bye run in your Street Machine C semifinals. So, two Street Machine classes, B and C, are both ready to be rolling on over into their final rounds. And once again, we have made the call for all finalists, or anybody still in the competition, really, to come on down back to the staging lanes. It's very rare that we get to make a call like that at 3 in the afternoon. Attention the pits, attention in the pits. Martin Dykstra, we need you in the staging lanes. Martin Dykstra, we need you in the staging lanes.
Street Rod finalists. Now in the water box, Martin Dykstra. With his host of sponsors of Valley Traffic Systems, Iron Mountain Equipment, Southridge Building, Alquip Diesel, Vanport Enterprise, Zemco, Ipex, and MCCM Welding, TCS side at 958. And Rob Monroe for White and Knuckle Racing and the Gibson Racing Transmissions, ST Performance, and BN Hot Rods Machine over Lord Coast side. This is for the final in Street Rod. Oh, and a red light from Martin Dykstra. Rob Monroe moves on. Monroe also turned on the red ball by 14 foul, but Martin Dykstra is the first loser. Uh, attention to the pits, attention to the pits. Exhibition cars, we need you to the staging lanes, please. Exhibition cars, please make your way back on down to the staging lanes. So with the street rod final wrapped up, we move into the street classic, the semi-finals. And first runner up is the by run, Colin Moore. In the fair lane, got the free pass after his opponent red lit in the last round of eliminations, and he'll get the free pass into the final round. be Paul Carr out of Rosedale in the Comet. Dot 1132 will be leaving second to Daryl Stoby in the Stoby Construction Chevelle. Dot at uh, 1058. advantage on the tree goes to Daryl Stolby. Is it enough? Yes, it is. Daryl Stolby, best Paul Carr. And we'll be going up against Colin Moore in the final. And with that, we roll into the Nostalgic Gas Final. And it is Pat McKinnis and the El Chupacabra Dodge. Dot of 1075 going up against David Siddons. 1949 Plymouth dialed at 1267. Wheels up for the El Chupacabra back down and now charging after David Sidden. Can he get there in time to beat him with the stripe? No, he can't! Four thousandths of a second and David Sidden out of Kelowna wins a nostalgic in the 2022 Langley Loafers Old Time Drags event from the Titanium Strip.
move your seat back to the seats. Tom Mahedon, the business owner with Germanigato and Bushmaster on his machine in the 94 Beretta, making his final pass of the day in his Pro Mod. Making the trip all the way out from Calgary and plans to also make an appearance at Smoke, Fire and Thunder later on this August, which would be his 80th time. He has taken that car out to make a hit at the Mission Raceway Park. Ahead and finished purging the nitrous, making sure everything is all set underneath the hood of that 1994 Pro Mod. Powering through, no problems this time around. 4.2, or 77 at 171 miles an hour. It's been a very consistent run, you know, about 4.2 middle of that range almost always 170, 171 miles an hour. Very consistent runner. Can't wait to see what he can bring to the table for Smoke, Fire, and Thunder. worth mentioning once again if you're still in competition Ken would like to see you in the staging lanes I see uh, some of the cars that are already there we are down to uh, one or two finals left door slammers we have uh, semi-final action three cars left in the door slammer category presented this weekend by TCS performance products sponsors of the TCS lane here at Mission Raceway the other lane, Lord Co. Raceway. Hopefully all of you fans have had a chance to pick up some souvenirs at the souvenir booth in the Pro Shop. Uh, there are uh, all sorts of great 
apparel and die cast and buttons, pins, uh, you name it, all sorts of things. Hard to even remember everything that's available there. And hopefully you had a chance to get some ice cream on a day like this. That never hurts. We do uh, thank all of you diehard fans for staying with us through uh, what is uh, a very, very warm day. So, uh, so we really do appreciate your time here. We're just waiting for a few more cars to get around the cooling time that they need to get their cars back into running order. And they'll be back in the staging lanes as we see uh, hoods open and uh, drivers Imagine they don't want to be sitting in their cars any longer than they absolutely have to be sitting in there because uh, of the heat. So nonetheless, we do ask all finalists to, well, anybody in competition really, to head back to the staging lanes. So word on the radio is it is time for Outlaw No Box. That is uh, the next final that we will be seeing heading down track. Outlaw No Box. And it's going to be Andy Antle and Keith Winterbottom. Andy Antle rolling up here in his F100. We saw the uh, advent of those plexiglass scoops a few years ago, helping the drivers uh, from different directions see the Christmas tree or the line of sight not being blocked, depending on how the driver is situated in the driver's compartment. So the plexiglass hood scoop, just making it a little bit easier to see everything that is going on. In the uh, other lane, Keith Winterbottom from Maple Ridge, 66 Nova, sponsored by Rags to Riches. So 582 cubic inch big block Chevy over here on the tower side, 540 on the spectator side. And so they're both staged, and here comes the handicap in favor slightly of Andy Antle. They're both green and both pretty much even on reaction times with a wind light coming on four. Keith Winterbottom, he runs an 8.69 as Andy Andel runs too quick under the dial, 8.93 on an 8.94 dial. So your winner in Outlaw No Box is Keith Winterbottom. So congratulations to that team and all their hard work. That is uh, great to see. I'm sure that they'll be uh, joining us at the Loafers Tent a little bit later on to pick up some prizes. So. Keith Winterbottom and team, congratulations for winning Outlaw N.
So it looks like we're going to have uh, yet one more exhibition pass from the uh, 554 replica. And this will be a uh, single. I talked at length about uh, the pedigree of this car, so I don't have to say too much more about it. Suffice to say that when it ran on nitro, the uh, smoke that you'll see from the burnout is what it looked like all the way down the quarter mile. And uh, that kind of tire slippage uh, certainly makes for a rather squirrely run on a, for any kind of type of car. So uh, it's going to be a handful at the best of times. Hot track out there, a little bit slippery, even though we've got the traction compound laid onto the surface. It can't help but be just a little bit gummy, and uh, so drivers are all aware of that, and we'll take that into consideration, knowing when to step off the gas and when not to. called Luke Below from North Vancouver. That's where home base is for that replica car that he uh, campaigns at various nostalgia events and races. Last minute touches, tune up to the car. Luke is gonna roll it into the stage and pre-stage beams. Make one more pass for the weekend. This is the 554 replica car, get set. So spinning the tires a lot and uh, shutting it off on that pass. Just not able to get a good grip on the track 1086 81 miles an hour gave it a valiant effort but uh, we love them being out here and we really appreciate the fact that uh, Luke brings that car for us to take a look at it's a legendary vehicle even if it is a replica of the original So cars fired up, street machine B looks to be a final. James Dobson and Rob Hodgson, final in street machine B. That's what it is, Camaro here on the tower side. That is James Dobson. Rob Hodgson in the Plymouth over on the spectator side. Pause for the burnouts, and so it will be a 1077 dial for the Camaro, 1099 for the Plymouth. So the Plymouth will be leaving the start line first. It is going to be uh, not much of a handicap by, uh, well, just about two tenths of a second. Tension in the pits, door slammers. We've called you to the lanes too. We need door slammers to the lanes. The 
when they head down track. Everybody's clean and green with almost identical reaction times for both drivers. Win light for James Dobson. 72 and a 74 reaction time for the drivers. Rob Hodson runs 11 flat on a 1099, but 1077 won. So dead on one on his reaction time for James Dobson to pick up the win in Street Machine B. So congratulations to James Dobson. He's got the win right now. So Colin Moore and Daryl Stoby. This is our final. And Street Classic B. So as races go, this one would uh, seem to be all going Daryl Stobie's way. But you know what? We don't race them on paper. We race them on the track. Colin Moore has a dial-in of 1444. So he's going to be leaving uh, roughly four seconds ahead of Daryl Stobie. And Daryl's going to have to be patient. And he is both reaction times again pretty close at the start line. So it'll be decided at the stripe and it's a win for Daryl Stoby. Picks up the win, 1092 in Street Classic B. So congratulations to Daryl. See, uh, Dad's here and Alex is there and uh, congratulations guys. It was all your hard work and tuning that did it, I think. So Stobie Construction out of Abbotsford. Congratulations to Daryl Stobie for the win in Street Classic B. So as, uh, as we continue on the day, we've just got uh, a few more finals to be run, semifinals in door slammers. So I'm going to take a hazard that we're still waiting for the door slammers to come around, but they may be behind that tree. I cannot see behind that tree. I am not Superman. No x-ray vision. So door slammers, we need you for... Your semifinal. So just taking a look at uh, how the day has shaped out so far at far as the winners and runners up. Well, let's take a look. Street Machine A, we're looking at uh, Warren Jacobson is your uh, champion in Street Machine A. Runner up, Charles Sidden. So uh, congratulations to uh, both of those teams. In Street Classic A, the winner was Cal Barnes and Ryan Johnson was the runner-up. So that is Street Classic A. Outlaw N that we saw just a few minutes ago. Andy Antel was your winner, and Keith Winterbottom was runner-up. 
Street Rod A. Street Rod A, Rob Monroe was your winner, and Martin Dykstra was the runner-up. Nostalgia Gas. Winner was Pat McInnes. And the runner-up was David Sidden. And Street Machine B, which uh, is the final that we just ran. Winner was Rob Hodgson. Okay, so as I was uh, reading some of those, let me say that I uh, got some names wrong just because I was looking at the wrong line. But we have the sheets. Let's uh, let's review that again just because we've got some downtime as we look. Tractors are still rolling out there, and we have got uh, Canada West Door Slammers, I think, rolling in for their semifinals. So Street Machine A again. Your winner is Warren Jacobson. The Street Classic A, Ryan Johnston. Outlaw N, winner is Keith Winterbottom. Street Rod A, Rob Monroe is your winner. David Sidden is your winner in Nostalgia Gas. And Street Classic B, your winner. Let's see, in Street Machine B, winner is James Dobson. And those are just some of the winners as we wait for a couple more finalists to be run. Two classes yet to run for finals here today. Street Machine C, where we had a full field of cars, and Canada West Door Slammers just looking for their semifinals. And uh, so I see the cars, a lot of them, in the staging lanes. There's Veronica and John Sayer. So they'll be rolling around underneath the bridge to get set for their final in Street Machine C.
Yes, it does say, actually, that she, she made particular note, Veronica Hodgson, who's in the uh, Dodge Dart over here on the tower side, John Sayers in the Dodge Dart over on the spectator side, and Veronica has said that uh, uh, her uh, tune-up is by Jim Benke. We're set, here comes the tree down. She is off, and here comes John Sayer in hot pursuit. And we have got them heading down the quarter mile, and it's going to be at the stripe. A wind light for Veronica Hodson. A double breakout, and there is chaos in the tower. 12.69 is the winning time for Veronica Hodson. John, he ran 11.83, so they both broke out, but Veronica was closer to the dial. 104 miles an hour, so congratulations to Veronica. And I guess that preparation from Jim Benke had a lot to do with the win. So congratulations to Veronica for winning in Street Machine C. So this is going to be a licensing pass. We've seen this car come up a couple of times. And going to be uh, just making one more licensing pass here on this car. Mike McMahon. see a few of you uh, diehard fans still in the sands uh, joining us here on this what can I say gorgeous Sunday licensing pass for Mike McMahon he heads down and shuts it off after half track goes 1182 so once again we uh, appreciate all of you diehard fans with us here for uh, just the closing stages of the race I would like to think that all of you are here because you are diehard die hard fans and not that it's because you just have nowhere else to go. But uh, hey, it's almost four o'clock. We still got a couple of great rounds of racing uh, from the uh, door slammers. Here's one of them right now. It's the semifinal. Peter Lucanis going to get a buy run. Derek Shirk. Ryan Ritchie will form the other half of the semifinal. And 
They are uh, just pairing up in the water box right now. So Brian Ritchie from Port Coquitlam. Ritchie Racing Engines in that 68 Chevelle Greenlight Auto Sales Sponsorship. He's in the program at number 11, and here he is in the semifinal, racing up against Brody Shirk, who took out his father earlier. Brody was in the number 15 spot. Been running 852, 847, and 842. Richie has been running basically 808, 8 flat, 8 flat, and 807. So uh, he's got 807 on the reader board and on the window right now against an 851 for Brody. And so Brody's going to leave first by just about a half a second. Should be almost two bulbs on the Christmas tree. May not seem much to you. Oh. He went deep. And that means he went red. Brian Ritchie, whether it was intentional or not, he went deep. You're not allowed to do that in door slammers. So Brian Ritchie handing the win to uh, Brody Shirk, 849, 155 miles an hour. So going deep, that is not going to win you races. It's okay in certain pro classes, but it is not in Canada West door slammers. So Peter Lacanis now will be racing up against Brody Shirk. Not sure if Peter is going to make the whole run or whether he is going to just take the tree and then go back into the staging lanes and get ready for the final. And that is exactly what he's going to do. So that makes it a whole lot quicker to set up the final in uh, as short a time as possible. So Peter Lucanis and Brody Shirk are going to be coming up in the final. So that will be right back here very, very shortly. So we're going to ask all of the uh, 
winners, the, all the class winners, to uh, head over to the Loafers tent. The Loafers tent where uh, we'll be set up to hand out all of the prizes, I believe. I, I have all of the uh, all the winners here. We're going to take a break on the microphone as I head over and do some prize handouts. Well, I'm going to try to do some prize handouts anyway, but we need all of the winners and runners up. And, uh, well, all the drivers who uh, expect to be winning something head over to the Loafer's Tent uh, because there uh, could very well be an envelope with some uh, cash or uh, a trophy or something. I'm just going to give you what they tell me. So uh, we'll turn off the mic for a little while and I'll head right over there.
Well, folks, there you have it. That was our final pass of the day. Peter versus Brody in the Canada West Door Slammers final, and your winner was Brody Shirk. 111 miles per hour versus Peter's, but just couldn't beat him all the way down. Thank you so much for this Langley Loafers weekend. We do have winner's circle still going on as well. Feel free to go congratulate the drivers if you're still around. I bet they'd love to say hi. So once again, folks, safe drive home. Happy holiday Monday tomorrow. And we will see everybody very, very soon. Take care.